Mike Houston of East Carolina off to a brilliant start in Boca Raton, a temporary home this week for South Florida. Apologize for the technical difficulties. We saw the early touchdown from Holton Aylers to C.J. Johnson. You will too here in mere moments. Taylor Goodness has been a wild move for teams adjusting to the Fast. A huge opening drive for the Pirates. Michael Dukes is on the return here. The Clemson transfer. And Dukes points it out across the 25. So back to the touchdown. And seven for East Carolina. And Holton Aylers goes deep. South Florida runs pressure right in the middle. And on the first first down, South Florida drives the game, plays coverage this time. They come after him. Holton Aylers takes advantage. Both the deep on the outside to C.J. Johnson. Jumps all the way to the Pirates. The Pirates jump all over South Florida. Jalen Johnson 
Intelligence is the foundation of any good business. But if every good business has it, how do you stand out? Intuition. When enabled by technology, intuition stops feeling like a hunch and starts looking like confidence. The confidence you get when you work with Cognizant, where we engineer every aspect of your business, technology, processes, and experiences to anticipate expectations and act instantly. This is intuition, and we can engineer it use a map in your car, why not use a map with your cart? Store mode in the Home Depot app makes doing easy, showing you where to find what you need. Let's call it turn-by-turn -turn shopping. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app. challenged the last to be chosen shelter dogs with special needs face a far longer road to adoption but Subaru knows even the toughest roads can lead to the most amazing places that's why Subaru and our retailers created National Make a Dogs Day to help all underdogs find homes Subaru more than a car company if you're always asking where next Capital One has the travel card for you Venture X. Earn 10x miles on hotels and 5x miles on flights booked through Capital One Travel. Venture X. What's in your wallet? 
7-0 lead for East Carolina. First quarter in Boca Raton, a game that was moved from Tampa to FAU Stadium. Ted Emmerich, Taylor McCard with you. Jeff Scott in his third year at USF. His team decimated by injuries already. They faced a brutal schedule. Now the week turned upside down due to Hurricane Ian. He's telling his team, we got to reset. 0-0, oh oh, this is the conference opener. They're treating this like a bowl game. We called it the American Bowl. Said we had to put together a road trip, move everything on one day's notice. And I know it doesn't feel like a bowl game, but from the operation standpoint, that's really exactly what it's like. First down, Gary Bohannon flips it to the returning Jimmy Horn Jr., the fastest player USF has on offense, but he can't get on track. Julius Wood is there along with Gerard Stringer. Loss of one. And for South Florida, again, it's that need to start fast, just the seven points like we mentioned in all of the season in the first quarter. You know, try and get some points early in this game. Get some momentum on your side. On second and 11, fake the handoff, and Bohannon's pass broken up. The intended for Choffrey Brown. Malik Fleming, the junior corner from Fairburn, Georgia, made the play. His second drop early in this game for the South Florida defense offense rather Malik Fleming corner on the other side had that big pick six against South Florida in 2021 it's a player that knows all too well how to play against this South Florida offense third and 11 and Michael Dukes motions out of the backfield USF just seven points in the first quarter all season. Bohannon under pressure, drops it off to Xavier Weaver, out with a leg injury last week, and Weaver can't get going. Knocked down inside the 10. USF going backwards on this drop. Get pressure off the edge here. Difficult for Gary Bohannon, has to give ground. And you see, look at all the white jerseys rallying to the football there. A nice series by the Pirates defense to get themselves off the field. But that slow start that we've talked about, that's continuing for this South Florida offense. And Blake Harrell, ECU's defensive coordinator, said, hey, we've got a new package installed. Might see some more blitzing from us this week. We want to rattle Gary Bohannon, especially after what happened last week against Louisville. Colin McCreary gets it away. And Fleming, will he field it? No. They'll let it roll. And ECU will have it at the 36, up 7 to nothing. Now, East Carolina Taylor could very well be sitting here at 4-0 instead, the two losses to NC State and Navy. Let's check out our players to watch presented by Grand Caliber. Well, the quarterbacks for both teams obviously play a huge role. Holt Naylor's has basically rewritten every record book almost for East Carolina and for the conference. Gary Bohannon played in the Big 12 championship. I mean, he's got some big wins from his time at Baylor. The guy that stands out to me, though, when you turn on the tape, really was Dwayne Boyles there in the middle. Number 11, it's a captain on defense for them, had the big interception against Florida. He's so important to this Bulls defense. Ehlers is leveled on first down. Jason Vaughn, the fourth year junior from Miami, playing just north of where he grew up with the sack. I think this is a protection bus. Look on the left side of your screen, 40 looks like he comes untouched. Man, definitely a protection bus there. Noah Henderson, the right tackle. I'm not sure if there was a mix up in assignment on who had Jason Vaughn, but he came untouched to get the big sack on Holt Nailers. That's a loss of eight. I'm gonna go on second and 18. Up the seam, and the catch is made across the 35. Shane Calhoun, a three-year starter, more of a blocker at tight end than a receiver. Calhoun makes the play, gain of 11. And third down here, something to pay attention to as the game goes along. This ECU offense, 12th nationally in third down conversion. USF's defense, 114th, giving up third down. It's a unit that struggles to get off the field. ECU converts 52% of the time. Their touchdown came on third and seven. They need seven here. Ehlers, the slant, caught by Jalen Johnson. It's a first down across midfield. The grad transfer taking advantage of it. Really, his first opportunity to play coming over from Georgia. Get the legal pick play here as you see C.J. Johnson set a little bit of a pick in his route, and then Jalen Johnson comes right in behind him. Man coverage, that's a man beater there. Good conversion by ECU. Pirates go up-tempo. Now the screen for Johnson, and steps out of bounds near the 45. C.J. Johnson throwing a block for him. 
We've seen a little bit of it, the, the shot play earlier in the game for the touchdown to C.J. Johnson, but you'll see a lot of these quick bubble screens out to the perimeter to Jalen Johnson, C.J. Johnson, also to Isaiah Winstead as well. See that slight grimace from Jalen Johnson on the sideline coming out now after the pickup of three, second and seven. To the ground game. And Marlon Gunn firing through the hole. Up to the 40-yard line, Gunn, the true freshman from Baton Rouge. Johnny Kirkpatrick says that he's ready for more. Marlon Gunn has to step up as well, along with Rajay Harris, in place of Keaton Mitchell. It's so important that both these guys have big games for this Pirates offense. Third and one for the Pirates. Ehlers keeps it. Ehlers has the first down and spins inside the 35. Holton Ehlers, always a threat with his legs. That's what you get with a veteran quarterback. South Florida comes down in man coverage. Holton Ehlers gets on the perimeter, realizes everybody's covered up, trying to hit his tight end in the flat, and just decides, you know what, I'll tuck this. I can go pick up the first down myself. Taylor, you see Ehlers still wearing the harness for his right non-throwing shoulder. He dislocated it in the loss to NC State. It's purely for stability. Coaches even think he could play without it. First down from the 33. And the give is to Gunn. And Gunn works inside the 30. Again, no Keaton Mitchell because of the hit pointer he suffered in the second half against Navy last week. That's the second leading rusher in the American. So Rajay Harris and Marlon Gunn along with Ehlers, that's the running game today. Well, you've got Keaton Mitchell out. You've also got Josiah Hatfield out, one of the receivers. So a couple skill players down for the Pirates. The rest of this group's going to have to rally around those two. Meanwhile, USF is just laughing. It's like, hold my beer. I'll show you injuries. Second and six. And a stop at the line of scrimmage. Gunn could not turn the corner. Third down upcoming. Yeah, the injuries you talked about for South Florida. Rashawn Yates is out. Antonio Greer out in the middle. Their corner, the Rutgers transfer, T.J. Robinson, who does such a nice job, usually for South Florida in the run game. He's out as well. You've also got, if you notice, look how many casts you see out here on the hands and wrists of some of these South Florida defenders. They're banged up right now, battling through a lot of injuries. Third and seven from the 30. USF brings the blitz, and Ehlers fires high for Winstead, who is calling for a flag. It's fourth down. I think that's going to be the key for South Florida throughout this game. We get a penalty here late. They may have picked that flag up, but the key here for South Florida throughout this game, that pressure on third down, playing man coverage on the back end, as we see ECU stay on the field on fourth down. They're five of eight on fourth down. Mike Houston doesn't mind going for it, especially in this part of the field. Pirates need seven. Blitz from USF. Flag is down far side of the field. Check it. Marlon Gunn and down at the 22. That is good enough for the first down, but check the penalty marker at the line of scrimmage. Could it be offsides? First down for ECU. They take the result of the play. What a conversion there for the Pirates. If you notice, Holton Aylers, it's fourth and seven, but he still trusts his running back. I'm going to check it down to my freshman in the flat. Let Marlon Gunn make somebody miss and fight for the first down. You don't always have to force it as a quarterback. Trust your guys. As you take a look here, just gets Marlon Gunn the ball in the flat, makes one miss, fights through a second tackle to pick up that fourth down conversion. And Taylor Morris Brown, the corner, the transfer from Kansas State, made that tackle and left. Now on the sideline, Ben Knox, number 12, takes his place. Another injury, perhaps, for South Florida. On first down, pitch it. This is Ryan Jones, a versatile weapon. And Jones is stopped after a gain of one. Usually lines up at tight end. He was in the backfield there. And a good job in pursuit by DJ Gordon, the Minnesota transfer who's just from Plant City, right down the road in Florida, replacing and, and backing up Antonio Greer, who's out in this game. But a nice tackle there by DJ Gordon. Second and nine for East Carolina. 
Ehlers finds the soft spot. Winstead the spin, and he stretches in for the touchdown. Second effort from Isaiah Winstead, and East Carolina doubles its lead. That's too easy for this pair between Holton Ehlers and Isaiah Winstead. As you take a look, Isaiah Winstead just finding the soft spot, what we call a hole shot here for Holton Ehlers, playing a too high safety look. A nice job by Isaiah Winstead, finding the soft spot between the corner and the safety, sits his route down, then makes somebody miss to pick up the touchdown. Man, what a fast start here for the Pirates. And Owen Daffer on for the extra point. Trying to shake off the latest missed field goal late in a loss. Happened last week against Navy. He's two for two on PATs today. Isaiah Winstead coming off back-to-back 100-yard -back games against Campbell and Navy. Off to a good start today for ECU. You use a map in your car. Why not use a map with your cart? Store mode in the Home Depot app makes doing easy, showing you where to find what you need. Let's call it turn-by-turn -turn shopping. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app. When you take on the road, what is it for? Is it for the thrill of getting behind the wheel and just enjoying the ride? Or is it for the statement you make on the road? Is it for the future generation of drivers, for your crew, or for theirs? Whatever your reasons may be, Know that when you take on the road, you are not alone in the miles ahead. Know that you're always backed by Morse. challenged the last to be chosen shelter dogs with special needs face a far longer road to adoption but Subaru knows even the toughest roads can lead to the most amazing places that's why Subaru and our retailers created National Make a Dogs Day to help all underdogs find homes Subaru more than a car company target. Every day we train, challenging ourselves and each other to exceed even our own expectations. Go beyond. NBA Open Week begins tomorrow and continues Friday on ESPN. Conference on ESPN Plus is presented by Roof Claim, presenting partner of the 2022 American Football Championship game. Honestly, any turnout in Boca Raton today is not a bad turnout, all things considered. Taking this game from Tampa and Raymond James Stadium, putting it at FAU Stadium in Boca Raton, 230 miles to the southeast. You're asking USF fans, they're based in Tampa to drive through the snarled traffic after Hurricane Ian. And I'll tell you what, USF, the coaches, the staff told us this week they could not say enough good things about how FAU has welcomed them. You see the Bulls logo at midfield, not to mention what Miami has done in opening up their indoor facility for USF to practice in this week. But it is USF down 14-0 late first, and here is Michael Dukes on the return out across the 25. So the Bulls have punted on their first two possessions, Taylor. They have a total of two yards. 
put yourself in Gary Bohannon's shoes right now. You, you don't have your left tackle. You've got injuries at receiver, at running back. How do you deal with all of this? Well, I think it goes back even to last week against Louisville. They were down their top four pass catchers. And this week, it just feels like they're still stuck in the mud a little bit on offense. East Carolina, over 150 yards of total offense early in this game, where, like you mentioned, South Florida, just the two yards of offense. For Gary Bohannon, try and get him some easy completions. And then we've seen a couple drops early from that receiver unit, but manufacture something easy to try and get some momentum going in this first quarter. On first down from the 27, Bohannon keeps. And Bohannon is across the 40. Gary Bohannon close to midfield. The quarterback run game was huge against Florida a couple of weeks ago. Bohannon with a big game there. And this may be what this offense needs to lean on. And Travis Trickett, the offensive coordinator and play caller, lean on more of this quarterback run game. Gary Bohannon with over 100 yards rushing against Florida a couple of weeks ago, like you mentioned. And this may be what they need to feature in order to move the ball consistently against East Carolina. 20-yard rip for Bo Hannon, who did bruise his right shoulder against Florida on a run two weeks ago, but he was a full participant in practice this week, according to the coaches. Easy completion here. Xavier Weaver is top target, and Weaver should have another first down for USF. It's exactly like we're talking about. Malik Fleming, the corner, off in coverage. Ten yards off. Just flip it out to Xavier Weaver. Weaver get it to him out in space. Those are the nice, easy completions as a quarterback. You want to try and have those at the beginning of drives. Now just two plays, and South Florida already well on the other side of the 50-yard line. Weaver didn't play last week with a leg injury, but back on the field today. Approaching the final minute of the first quarter. Bohannon on the move. And hits Jimmy Horn Jr. inside the 30. USF clicking now on this drop. Like this play call as well. Just give the delayed drop and then sprint out to the right side. Really just a two-man route concept there. And Jimmy Horn in the flat on the over route. A nice completion there. Now picking up the tempo. 40 seconds to play in the quarter. USF has put East Carolina on its heels in a timeout for the Pirates. You see what some momentum creates. Forces that timeout for East Carolina. So let's take you through the week that was for South Florida with this game being moved from Tampa to Boca Raton at FAU. They had 24 hours to prepare for this trip, set up base in Fort Lauderdale, left Tuesday afternoon. What should have been a four hour bus ride ended up being an eight hour bus ride because of traffic. Also, this team usually practices in the morning. Well, Miami says, hey, you can use our indoor facility, but you got to go after us 730 at night Thursday. They practice at Cardinal Gibbons High School, walk through then at FAU on Friday, totally disrupting their routine. Well, it's so different in every way. You talk about from the very beginning, that commute down to Fort Lauderdale, practicing at night, and then factor in, oh, by the way, it feels like half of your two deep is banged up as well. So this South Florida team, they're fighting through a lot right now, not just with the hurricane this week. The coaches hope that this is a galvanizing moment for this team. They have spent every moment this week with each other. On first down, Bohannon inside the five. It's Jimmy Horn with his second straight catch. Horn missed the last two games with a hamstring injury. He sets up USF with first and goal. It's a similar route that they just hit a minute ago to Jimmy Horn. This time it's not sprint out for Gary Bohannon. I thought if Gary Bohannon gets this out a little sooner, hits Jimmy Horn with an opportunity to turn up and score there. But a nice completion adds on to this drive as they're now well into the red zone at about the five-yard line. First and goal for USF. Bohannon keeps. He lost the football. It's loose inside the five. Now it's time to peel back the onion. Has East Carolina recovered? They think they have. Miles Berry says yes, and the officials say yes too. The promising drive for the Bulls comes up empty. A backbreaker there for South Florida. Julius Wood on defense, watch 32, 
all the way around, track down the quarterback and force the fumble. Huge play there for number 32, Julius Wood. An effort play on defense. And man, how we just talked about it a second ago, how important was it if Gary Bohannon could have gotten the ball out just a little bit earlier to Jimmy Horn on that play before, would have had an opportunity to turn up and score. Instead, one play later, turnover is forced. Now East Carolina back on the field. Xavier Smith, number 10 right there, the linebacker, 50-year senior, recovered the fumble for East Carolina with one second remaining in the quarter. So the Pirates take over at their own two. Ehlers pitches it out, caught. C.J. Johnson, who had ECU's first touchdown, and it's a first down out just shy of the 20 on the final play of the first quarter. Mike Houston and ECU with a strong start in Boca Raton. Touchdown passes to C.J. Johnson and to Isaiah Winstead, plus the takeaway moment to go and a 14 to nothing lead for the Pirates. You use a map in your car, why not use a map with your cart? Store mode in the Home Depot app makes doing easy, showing you where to find what you need. Let's call it turn-by-turn -turn shopping. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app. Fishing feet? As an Expedia member, you can save up to 30% when you add a hotel to your flight. So you can learn every way to say Knowing you get a sweet deal. The older. The physically challenged. The last to be chosen. Shelter dogs with special needs face a far longer road to adoption. But Subaru knows even the toughest roads can lead to the most amazing places. That's why Subaru and our retailers created National Make a Dogs Day to help all underdogs find homes. Subaru, more than a car company. ESPN. What makes for a great story? A great story has magic, power, and every once in a while, it has miracles. It needs an opening that sucks you in, and a mind-blowing ending that has you hanging on every snap. That's what makes for a great story. And as luck would have it, that's our story. of American Conference football games in the future with the Owls moving to the Americans starting next year. But today, it is the home for South Florida due to Hurricane Ian. And after one, it's East Carolina with the 14 to nothing lead over the Bulls. Ted Emmerich, Taylor McCarg, our entire crew 
After the pass of 20 yards from Holton Aylers to C.J. Johnson on first down, Aylers is dragged down from behind. It will be a positive gain for Aylers, who Taylor has started piping hot, 10 of 13, 157 yards and two scores. Really not much has gone wrong early in this game, and something else we've talked about for Holton Aylers. He's not the fastest guy, but when he takes off, he's decisive. He gets vertical, gets what he can get, and that's why you see he picks up a nice six yards out of something that could have been a sack and a dead play. Aylers will tell you he should have run it last week, late in regulation against Navy. Second and one, two timeouts in the back pocket, throws it across his body for an interception, and ECU lost in overtime. Aylers up top, C.J. Johnson reels it in and steps away from the defender, leaving everyone in the rear view mirror. Touchdown, East Carolina. A missile from Aylers to C.J. Johnson. Just another shot play to C.J. Johnson on the outside, and that's something we've seen early in this game is five winning on the outside. South Florida is known for its man coverage, its man defense, and bringing pressure. They brought the corner blitz from the other side on that play, and again, this Holton Aylers led offense beats them with another shot play to C.J. Johnson. Second time Aylers has hooked up with C.J. Johnson for a score. Johnson with 152 yards on three catches, and that one went for 74. Now Daffer for the PAT. And it's 21 to nothing. East Carolina. C.J. Johnson was suspended from the team in the offseason, reinstated in July. Holton Ayler says he's a changed person. He's the same guy he's always been on the field. We decided it's time to put a different kind of power tool in your hands. Store Mode in the Home Depot app gives you in-store tools made to help you get more done. To guide you every step of the way and explore products quickly with the scan. That way you get the top brands at the best prices without missing a beat. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app and see how doers get more done. Red Riding Hood loved visiting Grandma's house. Unfortunately, others did too. But after saving big with early holiday deals at Amazon, she was ready for those uninvited guests. <laughs> Who's a good boy? Apparently the big bad wolf. Bubbles. Bubbles. So many bubbles. As an Expedia member, you earn points on your travels. And that's on top of your airline miles. So you can go and see, or taste, or do absolutely nothing with all those bubbles. Without ever wondering if you're getting the most out of your trip. Because you are. The older. The physically challenged. The last to be chosen. Shelter dogs with special needs face a far longer road to adoption. But Subaru knows even the toughest roads can lead to the most amazing places. That's why Subaru and our retailers created National Make a Dogs Day to help all underdogs find homes. Subaru, more than a car company. When we were a motorized bicycle company, they said, you'll never be more than that. What will they say next? Honda, the power of dreams. Well, if you've seen the harrowing images and video from Southwest Florida this week, you know the devastation that Hurricane Ian caused. You can help people affected. Donate at redcross.org slash ESPN to help the Red Cross prepare for and respond and help people recover and rebuild. Millions losing power, damage totaling in the tens of billions of dollars. Redcross.org slash ESPN. This is Brian Batty 
on the return. The consensus All-American is a return man a year ago, and Batty is stopped at the seven-yard line by East Carolina, which has a 21-0 lead over USF, having to move this game from Tampa to Boca Raton with Hurricane Ian on its way to Southwest Florida. Holton Ehlers has thrown three touchdowns, the latest one 74 yards to C.J. Johnson. Well, and if you're late tuning into this game, three scores already for East Carolina, 255 yards of total offense. Also, East Carolina, this is the top 10 team in the nation in terms of time of possession. They average 35 minutes of time of possession a game, and to start this game, already well over 2-1 to one, winning the time of possession battle. USF with Gary Bohannon. Had such a good drive going until Bohannon fumbled it inside the five. That tee knocked down. And it'll be second down and nine coming up for Jeff Scott's team. One and three coming in. They looked so good against Florida two weeks ago. Ran for nearly 300 yards in that game. They're trying to recapture that. Well, and we saw a little bit of Gary Bohannon in the quarterback run game on the last drive. We'll see if they feature more of it here. Second and nine, Bohannon fakes the handoff, hits Jimmy Horn Jr. He can fly! Jimmy Horn Jr. leaving everyone in his wake. Sound the horn for Jimmy Horn Jr. USF is on the board. It took until October 1st, but USF finally has a touchdown pass this season. That's all it takes to get back in this game. Just complete a 91-yard touchdown pass to Jimmy Horn. Just a quick slant. A nice job by Gary Bohannon sitting in there as he's getting pressure right up the middle from this East Carolina defense. And then the rest of it is just let one of your playmakers be a playmaker. Get the ball in the hands of Jimmy Horn. 91 yards later, South Florida's on the board. Looked a lot like his 80-yard catch and run against Cincinnati a year ago. USF was the only team in the FBS without a touchdown pass. And finally, they have one. Bohannon to Horn, 91 yards. And USF is finally on the board. You use a map in your car. Why not use a map with your cart? Store mode in the Home Depot app makes doing easy, showing you where to find what you need. Let's call it turn-by-turn -turn shopping. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app. <gasps> Ironic. Edelman struggling with reception. Time to switch to Verizon, the most reliable 5G network in America. I'm listening. You even get a free 5G phone on them. Touchdown! Switch now and get the new Google Pixel 7 Pro on us. Only on Verizon. The older the physically challenged, the last to be chosen. Shelter dogs with special needs face a far longer road to adoption. But Subaru knows even the toughest roads can lead to the most amazing places. That's why Subaru and our retailers created National Make a Dogs Day to help all underdogs find homes. Subaru, more than a car company. Hi, I'm Alok, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Grilled Spicy Deluxe is it has that kick. Not too spicy, but it's just enough for your taste buds to feel that level of heat. And you're like, ooh, this is good. It's the perfect amount of spicy. Hi, I'm Capri, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Grilled Spicy Deluxe is the chicken. You can tell they actually put it on the grill, cooked it in the sauce, marinated it. You're definitely getting a good grilled spicy sandwich. This year, we're teaming up to bring you Monday Night Football. And we're back for 10 more weeks. Either way, you can't lose. Well, unless you have to wear suits to work. Or you have to leave your basement. <laughs> nice. Very nice. A great story has magic, power, and every once in a while, it has miracles. It's good. As luck would have it, that's our story. As we take another look at that 91-yard touchdown run and catch by Jimmy Horn, I want you to pay attention to the linebackers right in the middle of the screen. And then also you've got the field safety at the top. 
think that is where you've got your linebackers here. They get influenced by the play action and move down. Then your safety by himself. If this free safety misses that tackle, there's nobody else left. Big play for this South Florida offense to get themselves back in the game. Oh, Jimmy Horn with a look back. Oh, you're going to catch me? No, you're Little Tyreek Hill. No, you're not. Throw up the deuces, too. He didn't do that. Uh, you can just tell after talking with Jeff Scott and his staff this week, can, can something go right? Nothing did last week on the road against Louisville. A week after, they were so close to going into the swamp and knocking off Florida. And yeah, you fall behind 21 nothing. but finally something positive for the Bulls. Well, and it's a team that go through their non-conference schedule. I mean, look at how difficult the first four weeks were as they enter conference play today, but losses at or home to BYU and then road trips to Florida to Louisville. Oh, by the way, next week they have to go to Cincinnati. I mean, they're the opening six games, the first half of their schedule, one of the more difficult first six weeks for any team in the country at any level, not just the American Conference, but especially that game against Florida had so many guys get injured in that game, and I think that's part of what South Florida is battling through right now. Not just the guys that are out, but the guys that are playing and are still banged up. We'll see many in the secondary wearing casts for broken wrists. Four starters on defense are out because of injury. Bolton Aylers has three touchdown passes for East Carolina. And a first down to C.J. Johnson, who has caught two of those scores. Pick up of 11 here. Talk about using every blade of grass. You've got C.J. Johnson tiptoeing there and a nice throw by Holton Aylers. Throw that where only your guy can get it. Picks up another first down. From the 35, Rajay Harris is tripped up at the line of scrimmage. D.J. Gordon the fourth, the Minnesota transfer, trips him up. This linebacker room for the Bulls is one of the best in college football, but especially here in the American Athletic Conference. Dwayne Boyles, the captain, D.J. Gordon there in the middle, and Antonio Greer as well when he's in. This is a unit that Bob Shoup, the defensive coordinator, talked about. I think these are maybe the best three players on our defense between Gordon, Greer, and Boyles. Second and nine for ECU. Aylers across the middle and incomplete intended for Shane Calhoun. Matthew Hill looked like he got a hand on it for USA. Uh, big tight end number 80, Shane Calhoun, is open right there in the middle. I think Holden Aylers sped up his delivery a little bit too much, got a little quick with the delivery, and puts it just outside his big tight end. Aylers has improved quite a bit in the accuracy department. It is five years as the starter, but that was a misfire. Now third and nine. More pressure being shown by the Bulls. Just a three-man rush. Aylers toward the sideline and over the head of Isaiah Winstead. Fourth down, South Florida comes up with a stop. How big was that for the South Florida defense? They don't end up bringing pressure. They kind of just spy both their linebackers with Boyles and DJ Gordon, and then good coverage on the back end. Get your defense off the field. Get it back in the hands of your offense after their big quick strike touchdown a minute ago. Sean Atkins awaits the punt from Luke Larson. From the 20, Atkins pinballs off one man, and he's down at the 25. So early second quarter, South Florida, the 91-yard touchdown pass from Gary Bohannon to Jimmy Horn Jr. Now forcing a three and out, and they've got it back. I don't know if Atkins knew that he was about to get hit, to be completely honest. There at the last second, a good job protecting himself. But you're exactly right. Get the ball back in the hands of Gary Bohannon. Give this offense an opportunity to stay on the field. That's part of your best defense if you're South Florida. Keep it away from Holton Aylers and the Pirates offense. Set up at the 25. On first down, fake that jet sweep. Michael Dukes into the middle of the line for a nominal gain, maybe two on the play. You saw that jet sweep motion. That's something I think this South Florida offense is going to be missing in this game. Do you have a Joe, a Joe out in this game? Some of those key pieces that we talked about. Where else do you, who, what other playmakers do you get the ball to? 
on second and eight. Give it to Dukes again, trying to spin out of trouble. But Jeremy Lewis hangs on. Short gain again. Lewis considered the heartbeat of the East Carolina defense. We've called his name a handful of times already. As you see, South Florida 0 for 2 on third down attempts. Can they pick up their first first down of the game? Yeah, outside of the touchdown. Third and seven. Bohannon might be changing the play as he looks to the sideline. Bohannon fires. It's tipped. Incomplete. Miles Berry stuck a hand out as Bohannon was trying to hook up with Horn. Another big play from 34 right in the middle. And you're exactly right. Gary Bohannon's got his receiver open just running the dig route. If Miles Berry doesn't get that hand up and knock this down, this is likely a conversion. So fourth and seven, and Malik Fleming trots out to receive this punt from Colin McCreary. Again, stepping in for the injured Andrew Stokes down with a hamstring injury. Fleming near the 30 with the fair catch for East Carolina. And a timeout in Boca Raton. East Carolina up by two scores. They've got the ball back. Bubbles. Bubbles. So many bubbles. As an Expedia member, you earn points on your travels. And that's on top of your airline miles. So you can go and see, or taste, or do absolutely nothing with all those bubbles. Without ever wondering if you're getting the most out of your trip. Because you are. The older. The physically challenged. The last to be chosen. Shelter dogs with special needs face a far longer road to adoption. But Subaru knows even the toughest roads can lead to the most amazing places. That's why Subaru and our retailers created National Make a Dogs Day to help all underdogs find homes. Subaru, more than a car company. Every day we train, challenging ourselves and each other to exceed even our own expectations. You can't haggle the price of your phone bill, but you can on a new RV at General RV during the Bid and Buy sales event. October 19th through the 23rd, the best price can be your price because we're accepting offers on all new RVs. Shop our huge selection of travel trailers, fifth wheels, luxury motorhomes, B-vans, and more. It's never been easier to get a great deal. You bid, you buy, you camp, but only at General RV. Luxury exemplified. Innovation electrified. With Apple Music seamlessly integrated. The all-new, all-electric EQS SUV from Mercedes-Benz. This World Series, sign up for Taco Bell Rewards and get a free Doritos Locos Tacos after the first stolen base. Last year, Ozzy Albee scored America free tacos in seconds. And this year, you can steal your taco faster than ever, only on the app. Ready for an Aaron Judge split screen? Right. We don't do that on Plus. Let's tell you about next week, American football on the ESPN networks. Friday night, ESPN2 Houston. Two and three after the overtime loss to Tulane last night. They'll be at Memphis next Saturday afternoon. South Florida Bulls on the road against the defending conference champ Cincinnati. You'll be there, Taylor, at Nippert Stadium, ESPN Plus. 
also Saturday, the ECU Pirates at Tulane on ESPNU. How about what Will Fritz has done at Tulane? Four and one now on the year. Getting down to your third string quarterback last You're night. Still down. figured out a way to win. And man, for Houston, I think the total now sits at 53 total penalties. Most penalized team in college football. Dana's not happy about the undisciplined team he's got right now. First down, East Carolina up 21 to 7 over USF, and Marlon Gunn Jr. seeing the biggest action of his career to this point, taking it out close to the first down marker. Again, with Keaton Mitchell out in this game, Marlon Gunn and Rajay Harris have to step up early in this game. I've been impressed with Marlon Gunn, the freshman, his ability to be physical between the tackles. It's a first down for Gunn now at the 39. And Gunn motions into the backfield. Ehlers on the draw. And Ehlers is stood up. Knocked down after a short gain on the play. Thought this was schemed up nicely. A good play design and play call. I think Holton Ehlers just misreads a block. Watch Marlon Gunn right here. Just stay to your right side. You've got this is perfectly set up. If you're Holton Ehlers, just keep hugging that right side off of your blocker in front of him. Instead, cuts it back a little bit and ends up just being a four-yard gain. Devon Hicks made the tackle. Second and six for the Pirates. Back to Gunn. And a knockdown at the 45, pickup of two, setting up third and four for East Carolina. And South Florida staying true to four, more of that pressure even on second down in that man-free defense where they hug the line of scrimmage, get a lot of bodies close to the line of scrimmage. Might see that again here in a critical third down, opportunity for them to get off the field. Now Bob Shoup, USF's defensive coordinator, describes his defense as being aggressive without being reckless. Let's see how much pressure they bring here. Third and four. Remember they backed off on the last third down play. Instead, they bring the house. Ehlers into the flat. It's a first down. Shane Calhoun across midfield. ECU beats the blitz. And you nailed it, Ted, on the last one. They backed off. This time, they have both linebackers walked up at the A-gap. Right there in the middle. Big 54 Avery Jones takes the linebacker on the right. That's the Mike linebacker. The running back takes the one on the left. It's picked up perfectly by this offense and a nice throw from Holton Aylers to his big tight end, Shane Calhoun. Coaches love Calhoun. They say he's a great student. Got a B this week, and he was mad. Donnie Kirkpatrick, the offensive coordinator, said, get my uh, parents with love if I got Bs. Now to the other tight end, Ryan Jones with another first down for East Carolina. Jones himself a mismatch problem. Looks like a little RPO action here as Holton Ehlers pulls the ball and gets rid of it right now because you got linemen that are starting to work downfield. They're blocking that like a run game, and that's a nice job by Holton Ehlers. Get the ball out quick before those linemen work their way too far downfield. A 25-yard pickup for Ryan Jones, who started his career on defense at Oklahoma. First down on the edge of the red zone. Gun is swallowed up behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of one on the play. Rashad Cheney Jr., the Minnesota transfer with the tackle. Big play in the middle there by Rashad Cheney. Going back a couple plays to that big third down conversion by Holt Naylor's in this offense. That's part of what, Don, what Coach Donnie Kirkpatrick talked about, how critical it is that having a veteran quarterback that sets the protection. He knows where everything is. He can direct traffic, tell everybody where they're going. That helps you get protected and pick up those third downs that we saw just a minute ago. Second and 11. Ehlers works out of an empty gun now. Four-man rush. Ehlers with the time. Throws a dart. Ryan Jones inside the five, and he barrels in for the touchdown. Touchdown pass number four from Holton Ehlers. This one to number four. To Ryan Jones, a guy that started out on the defensive side of the ball in Oklahoma, transfers, turns into a, a starting tight end here for ECU. This is really nice by Holton Naylor. Stay patient. Let Ryan Jones work through his route, finds that second window where he gets open. And right now, it feels like ECU is getting about whatever they want on the offensive side. You see a man down for East Carolina up front. 
with Ehlers right there near his teammate, Isaiah Foote, the right guard, in his first year as a starter. Take another look. Four on the right side just sets up and shows his numbers. And then he's got the option. It's likely what they call it in their scheme. In our offense, it was called an option route. Let your tight end set up to a spot that he can either break out, he can break vertical, he can go left or right, just find open space. And that's a nice job by Ryan Jones doing exactly that. And Holt Naylor staying patient, letting him work through his route. And what that also requires, you have to have pretty good protection, which is what they had up front there to allow Holt Naylor to get it to his big tight end. Jones has now caught a touchdown pass in four consecutive games. And good to see Isaiah Foote back on his feet. A sophomore from Prince Frederick, Maryland. Hopefully we see Big 66 get back in the game at some point. It'll be interesting to see do, what pieces do they move around. Do we see Jacob Sacra back up right guard in the game here? And Daffer converts with the extra points. A 28 to 7 lead for East Carolina in Boca Raton. Holton Aylers took responsibility for the loss to Navy last week. The interception late in regulation. He couldn't have dreamed of a better first half today. When it comes to doing, getting what you need starts with our app. Need it today? Pick it up curbside. Need it to you? We deliver. Your trunk? Our trucks. However you get it, we've got you. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app. Sand. We like sand, don't we? Between the toes and such, and in other places. Expedia tracks the price of your flight and lets you know when it's best to book. So you can go see all the sandiest sand. And never wonder if you booked at the right time. Because you did. The older, the physically challenged, the last to be chosen. Shelter dogs with special needs face a far longer road to adoption. But Subaru knows even the toughest roads can lead to the most amazing places. That's why Subaru and our retailers created National Make a Dogs Day to help all underdogs find homes. Subaru, more than a car company. Edelman's struggling with reception. Time to switch to Verizon, the most reliable 5G network in America. I'm listening. You even get a free 5G phone on them. Touchdown! Switch now and get the new Google Pixel 7 Pro on us. Only on Verizon. Man, I make this cheesiest chain look good. I'm still feeling the cheesiest. You are a wheel of cheese. Cheese it, official sponsor of the college football playoff. This World Series, sign up for Taco Bell Rewards and get a free Doritos Locos Tacos after the first stolen base. Last year, Ozzy Albee scored America free tacos in seconds. And this year, you can steal your taco faster than ever, only on the app. Everyone is ready for Monday Night Football. The Chicago Bears square off with Belichick and the Patriots. making the trip to Boca Raton. This game moved from Tampa to FAU because of Hurricane Ian and East Carolina with a 28-7 lead here in the first half. Ted Emmerich, Taylor McCarg, our entire crew, Holton Ehlers, four touchdown passes, the latest one to Ryan Jones. So it's four touchdowns in six possessions for ECU. Owen Daffer ready to kick away. Over the head of 
Brian Batty with a touchback. Well, ECU coming off another excruciating loss last week to Navy. Remember week one against NC State. Daffer missed clutch kicks in both of them. I asked Mike Houston, how do you deal with something like that? How do you move on? He says, Sunday is so important for us. We cleanse ourselves no matter what happens on Sunday. He told the team, don't worry about the big picture. We just move on. Well, Coach Mike Houston talked about it. We still feel like we have an opportunity to win this conference, even with the opening loss to Navy. He said, I think Navy can go out and beat any team in this conference, and they can be beat by anybody in this conference. And Navy played about a perfect game against ECU last week. Just nine possessions for ECU all game. On first down, Gary Bohannon hits Jimmy Horn Jr. They hooked up for a 91-yard touchdown. South Florida's only scored today. This one goes for two yards. But you're exactly right. ECU feels like they're a missed field goal away in the opener from beating North Carolina State. And then against Navy, regardless of how poorly they played for most of that game, there was still an opportunity at the very end of the game for them to win. Holt Mailer's with that late interception over the middle, and they're sitting here now at 2-2. Two and two. They could very well be ranked right now and undefeated, if not for those two games. Bohannon hands it to Jimmy Horn Jr. on the jet sweep, and Horn has a first down across the 35, pushed out at the 38. Just a simple end around to Jimmy Horn. That's some of what, if you're the quarterback, Gary Bohannon, those are the things you like to see. Manufacture ways to get the ball in the hands of your explosive playmakers. Let's see if South Florida can keep one of these sustained drives on the field. Outside of a 91-yard touchdown, hasn't been a lot of success on the offensive side of the ball for them today. Under six minutes to play in the half. USF with a first down at their own 38. Brian Batty stepping out of a tackle. And Batty is across the 45. Basically the third string running back known more as an All-American return man. And he's their leading rusher this year. Not only that, but he's really good out of the backfield as well. You see, good job getting to the right side, get vertical. You're exactly right. But 21, you'll see Gary Bohannon get the ball to him in screen game and then also as his check down. Pickup of seven. Batty averages eight yards a carry this year. Third leading rusher in the American entering the weekend. Second and three. The trick play. Bohan in the flea flicker drops it off short. Batty across midfield and he stumbles at the East Carolina 44. All that movement, it's a first down. It felt like he may have messed up getting this set up. The timing didn't feel exactly right for South Florida. So credit to Gary Bohan and don't try to force one downfield. How many times do we see a double reverse pass end up? You work that you work on that all week. You get so excited about that as a quarterback. And then you force it, ends up getting intercepted. A good job by Gary Bohannon. Just check it down. Edwin Lee is the referee. So an illegal forward pass called against USF. The issue on this play, and I wondered if they caught this, Gary Bohannon tosses the ball forward instead of handing it off. And I we couldn't tell at the beginning of the play if it was handed off. It was such a close bang-bang play, but that's exactly what happens. Because Gary Bohannon technically tosses it forward, that's a pass. Think about your screen game. A lot of guys, they'll have that jet sweep motion and they just flip it up in front of them. That's a pass. Those go down as passing yards or receiving yards. So if it's going to be a double pass like or a double reverse, you have to hand that ball off instead of toss it. So third down now at the USF 30. They need to get to close to midfield. Down the seam. It's Horn with a first down. He is hammered inside the 40, but USF moves the chains. Jimmy Horn Jr. is giving the Bulls some juice today. All for not there as you make up back ahead of where you would have been from the trick play a minute ago. Just right up the seam. A good throw. Soft touch there by Gary Bohan. And a nice catch by Jimmy Horn. You may have another marker down here. If it stands, Horn is up to 156 yards and a touchdown on six catches, but I don't believe it will stand. The call was ineligible man downfield. And it was called against Mike Lofton, the UCF transfer. 
who is playing more on the line after left tackle Donovan Jennings suffered a broken leg and is out for the season. Wow. So wipe away that gain for Horn. And third down again from the 25. And USF runs it with Brian Batte. Knocked down after a pickup of four to the 29. Well, so first the trick play wiped out, and now the pass to Jimmy Horn. Feels like South Florida throughout this first half shooting themselves in the foot. They had the big drive earlier in the game. Then Gary Bohannon fumbles the ball inside their own five-yard line as they're driving in to score. Now you've got the two backs back penalties on the offensive line, and these are killers. It's an offensive unit that they're, they're not good enough right now to overcome that many mistakes. There are very few offenses that are that good. Sure. Having a tough time staying on the field right now. Now remember when Bohannon fumbled it inside the five, USF was down 14-0, score a touchdown there, one score game, but ECU struck big. Malik Fleming, field opening up for him, across midfield. Fleming shaking people off, still on his feet. Fleming inside the 10, and finally knocked out of bounds. He had a pick six last year against South Florida, almost brought a punt all the way back this year. This was set up so well by the return team for East Carolina. And you're exactly right. Make a couple of miss right at the beginning. Get to your blocks on the perimeter. He's just setting traffic a little bit. So you see somebody take one right in the face there. A stiff arm on the perimeter almost gets Number to the end zone. We may have another marker down here. face mask against South Florida on Colin McCreary, the punter. And you saw right there on the return, Colin McCreary, as Malik Fleming is trying to cut past him, McCreary just sticks that hand out, gets a piece of the face mask, moves it all the way down to the five-yard line. DCU again set up incredible field position here after the big Malik Fleming return. First and goal at the five. Ehlers has already thrown four touchdown passes here in the first half. Calhoun motions out. Harris is the running back. It's the draw. Rajay Harris to the end zone for the touchdown. East Carolina. East Carolina adds to its lead. No Keaton Mitchell, no problem. Rajay Harris running right at the free safety, wins at the goal line. Love to see your big running back with a physical ending right there. Boom. Sticks his shoulder out, gets into the end zone, extends this. About to be a four touchdown lead for East Carolina. So after the big punt return by Malik Fleming, ECU wastes no time to cash in. Daffer missed the extra point. Extra point. Wide to the right for the misses against Three NC State and Navy in East Carolina's two losses. Back to the touchdown. Just a delay here. A little bit of a draw concept, but a good physical in there. And I, I the classic announcer, Jake, I say they're about to go up four touchdowns. And what happens? Miss the extra point. Well, we all saw what Hurricane Ian did to Florida, to the Carolinas as well. You can help those affected. Donate at redcross.org slash ESPN. Help the Red Cross prepare for, respond to, and help people recover and rebuild. Millions of people lost power. The damage in the tens of billions of dollars in this game is in Boca Raton because of Hurricane Ian. Thankfully, we were told by officials at USF that all families of players and staff are safe. Of course, a bulk of the South Florida roster being from Florida and including many from Southwest Florida. Everyone is okay, thankfully. So a 34-7 East Carolina lead, and South Florida will have it back with 3-12 remaining in the half. 
East Carolina coming into the season, yeah, they were picked to finish sixth in the American, right in the middle out of 11 teams. They just snapped their bowl drought last year, didn't get to play in the bowl game. It was canceled because of COVID issues on the Boston College side. That would have been the military bowl. This team absolutely expects to play in a bowl game this year. They expect to compete for the American Conference title. Well, and you said it earlier, but if they have won the two games that they really feel like they should have against North Carolina State and Navy, this team would be ranked right now. We'd be talking about a 4-0, 1-0 in conference ECU team. Bohannon escapes the pocket for USF, and he'll lose yardage on the play, stepping out at the 23. And Gary Bohannon's got to throw that ball away. He ends up taking a two or three yard loss. Breaks contain. Good job getting on the edge. Try and make something happen. But once you realize it's not there, just throw this ball away. There, there's no reason as a quarterback to take a three yard, three yard loss there. What do you see from Bohannon overall? Like all things considered, yes, the injuries on the line and at receiver. It's a guy who helped Baylor win the Big 12 championship last year. I thought against Florida, this offense was really humming. They were playing good team offense. People were in the right spots. Louisville last week in the first half of this week, the offense just feels out of sorts. On second and 13, Batsy, the hurdle across the 30-yard line, third and four upcoming. And what I, mean, what I mean by out of sorts, you just have people in protection on the offensive line. They're out of place. They're missing protections. Receivers dropping balls. And what that's caused is Gary Bohannon to force the ball. And when we talked to offensive coordinator Travis Trickett, he said, I just want him to go play. I want him to relax and go play, take what the defense gives him. He doesn't have to force it. Had his shoulder banged up against Florida. I think that's caused some of what's made the, he's had a couple balls that have sailed, but try and find a rhythm here on this drive before they go into half. Get some sort of points before they go into half. Bulls will have the ball to start the second half. Third and four, and Bohannon skips it in to Choffrey Brown. And that's part of what I mean right there. Malik Fleming, the corner, steps down. Outside receiver gets turned loose, and Gary Bohannon still tries to fit in the, the flat route. Now, he sticks it in the ground because he realizes it's not there, but there's an outside receiver open when Malik Fleming jumps it from the corner position. These are things, as a quarterback that we've talked about, played at a high level, played in a Big 12 championship, has some big wins under his belt. We're just not seeing that right now, not only from Gary Bohannon. It's not fair to just put all the blame on him as a team and as an offensive unit, just been out of sync the last couple weeks. McCreary to punt on fourth and four. And the fair catch at the 30 from Malik Fleming and the flag is thrown. Malik Duke, Ma Michael Dukes, excuse me, might have gotten a little too close to Fleming there. That's exactly the call. Dukes right in Fleming's face as he brought it in. And East Carolina has it with 142 remaining in the half and two timeouts at their disposal. And Jeff Scott said that this is the American Bowl for his team. Treating this like a bowl trip, they had to plan it in 24 hours moving operations to Fort Lauderdale for the week and playing the game in Boca Raton. They stop East Carolina here late in the half. ECU with the penalty starting at their own 45. Ehlers dumps it, caught by Marlon Gunn, and cracked down just shy of midfield. Gunn's second catch of the year. And that penalty where it puts this drive to start it allows ECU to go through their two-minute offense. They're already at midfield opportunity for them to get points before half now. Second and five. Again, ECU has two timeouts. Ehlers across the middle. It's Ryan Jones. And Jones with a first down in USF territory. Clock stops momentarily at 110. And Ryan Jones is so impressive to me. I mean, this was a four-star recruit coming out of high school, but on the defensive side of the ball, and he's done such a nice job adjusting to being a tight end, has really stepped up for them, is on the Mackey watch list coming into this season. Basically an overgrown receiver at tight end, Ryan Jones. 60 seconds to play in the half. From the 25, Ehlers looking to Jones again, and off his fingertips and incomplete. Makai LaPointe, the veteran safety, had the coverage. 
But you just go down the list for the playmakers for this ECU offense. Ryan Jones, we've talked quite a bit about. Keaton Mitchell isn't even playing today. How important is he in this offense? That's one of the best running backs in the conference. C.J. Johnson's had a huge game already. Isaiah Winstead, Jalen Johnson. I mean, there are so many playmakers for this Pirates offense. Second and 10 at the 25, 57 seconds to go in the half. USF brings pressure. Ehlers to Jones, who is bumped out of bounds near the 20-yard line. Third down upcoming, and the clock is rolling. Because he did not get out of bounds, he had his forward progress stopped. They're going to roll the clock here. Again, East Carolina has two timeouts. 38 seconds now they call one. So one timeout left for Mike Houston. Driving for more, already up 34 to seven. I think that's what Mike Houston is arguing with the official about right now. He doesn't seem, as you see him crack a smile there, he doesn't seem too bothered by it, having to burn that timeout. I think that helps when you're up 34 to seven, operating your two minute offense. And for East Carolina, it, it started fast for them. And it's been a combination of things. They've had the big play. They've been able to get off the field on defense. And they've also controlled the clock well over 2-1 to one in time of possession. And that stat means a lot when you can score. That stat doesn't mean anything if you don't score. But if you're converting red zone trips and you're hitting big plays and you're playing keep away from the other team's offense, that is a, a tough mix for the opposing team to try and stay in the game. 38 seconds left in the half. One timeout remaining for East Carolina and third and six from the Bulls 21. Ehlers sends C.J. Johnson in motion. Ehlers toward the sticks, caught by Winstead. It is a first down inside the 15. Clock stops just for a moment, 32 seconds, and Ehlers might try to clock it here. They'll run a play instead. Ehlers to the end zone. C.J. Johnson pulls it in for the touchdown. touchdown. Ehlers, five scoring strikes. Three of them to C.J. Johnson. A brilliant first half for the Pirates. Put it up on the outside to C.J. Johnson. And in the first half of this game, three times already, we've seen five come down with a touchdown. This is just a simple fade. Throw it to the back corner of the end zone to your playmaker. Ball's even a little bit underthrown, but five comes down with it again for the Pirates. Incredible first half for C.J. Johnson. And Owen Daffer's extra point is good this time. 41 to seven. East Carolina. 18 seconds to play in the half. C.J. Johnson has been starting since his freshman year at East Carolina. He was a freshman All-American back in 2019. He has surpassed 2,000 yards receiving in his career. And the coaches love his new attitude. They say he was admittedly selfish. He was suspended from the team in February for an off-field incident, reinstated in July. Bolton Ehlers said he had a heart-to-heart -heart with him, and now everyone recognizes that C.J. Johnson is a different person on and off the field. Well, and his third touchdown today, career high for him, and a guy that is celebrated, like you mentioned. And Holton Ehlers, his signal caller, is inching his way towards being the all-time leading passer for East Carolina. Came into this game needing just 706 yards. I don't think he's going to get there today. I'm not certain of that. You sure about With that? With the way this first half has gone, he might get there today. But at some point in this season, if he can stay healthy, Holt Naylor will certainly get there. Brian Batty, the All-American kick returner, takes it out across the 35 for USF. Nine seconds to play in the half. Now, Ehlers, the all-time leader in the American in passing yards, total offense, completions, He'll become East Carolina's all-time leading passer by the end of the season, barring injury. He'll overtake Shane Carden for that, but the numbers are just ridiculous in this first half. 
of fact, Donnie Kirkpatrick, his offensive coordinator, when we talked to him this week, he said, look, when we inherited Colt Naylor's, his freshman year, he really was more like a wildcat, ran the ball some, threw it a little bit, but he's been so proud, Donnie Kirkpatrick said, of, of Colt Naylor's progression as a passer and how he's matured at the quarterback position over the, his career. Nine seconds to go in the half. Bohannon drops it off. Batty skirts out of bounds at the 45. Two seconds to go until halftime. Remember, USF had it in the red zone, inside the 10, in fact. Down 14 0. Bohannon loses a fumble. East Carolina strikes shortly after with a 74-yard touchdown pass from Ehlers to C.J. Johnson. And East Carolina has piled on from there. Timeout called by East Carolina. Two seconds still remain in the first half. Well, Mike Houston was telling us, okay, Moving the game from Tampa to Boca Raton doesn't really affect us that much. We're playing on the road anyway, but he said that his players were pretty nervous and asking the coaches, well, what about the plane ride? Just not knowing the path of the storm, Hurricane Ian, of course, then hitting the Carolinas late in the week. And Mike Houston said, guys, my rear end is going to be on the same plane as yours. We're going to be safe. And thankfully, they were heading down from Greenville yes, yesterday. They didn't know if they were going to take the long way out to the, to the west, work down through the south, and then come around, or if they were going to go out over the Atlantic and peel around. But you're exactly right. He said, look, I, I promise you, we are not going to fly directly through this storm. No. So two seconds to go in the half scrimmage the 45 of USF and guess what we've got a review looking at potentially where this play ended up with regards to the spot it's about the only thing I can think of for South Florida the injuries we talked about how important those have been and how critical they've been on both sides of the ball and it's a team that brought in 30 transfers. 24 transfers are in this team's 2D. And part of that, when you have injuries, the continuity, it takes time to build that. And when you have guys go down and you have entire units on the offensive side and the defensive side that haven't played a lot of football together, this can happen. And the non-conference schedule didn't do them any favors. As we take another look, Batty coming out of the backfield, I think, looking potentially at the spot, not really sure. That looks like they have the spot about right. Unless there's some sort of targeting that we're missing. Not exactly sure. But going back to the non-conference schedule for South Florida, when we talked to Coach Jeff Scott, we'll get the call here. Edwin Lee, what was that all about? Okay, then. we we'll just move on from that. But was, again, the non-conference schedule. I'm not sure that it was, but the, the non-conference schedule, I'll just say one more time. Yeah. Incredibly difficult. It's challenging to have the six games that they open with. It's difficult. And when you have this many injuries, you can point back to, especially games like Florida, how emotional that game was. It's tough to move on from a game like that. Final play of the half. Bohannon to Jimmy Horn Jr., who has the Bulls touchdown. Moore in the sidestep and out of bounds at the 35. Jimmy Horn has had a big first half. One of the few bright spots for South Florida in Boca Raton because of Hurricane Ian. East Carolina up 41 to 7 behind Holton Ehlers' five touchdown passes and a career high three touchdown catches from C.J. Johnson. We are at the half at FAU Stadium. Coming up, we will check out the top plays of the week in the American.
2022 MLS Cup Playoffs. Time to show it to the world. Don't miss the 2022 MLS Cup Playoffs, October 15th through the 30th. What did you expect? Did you think you could relax? Or had you convinced yourself some records were forever? That you'd seen everything there was to see? Or have you realized you can't look away and you don't know the future and that the game has never been better? That is hockey. What makes for a great story? A great story has magic, power, and every once in a while, it has miracles. It needs an opening that sucks you in, and a mind-blowing ending that has you hanging on every snap. That's what makes for a great story. And as luck would have it, that's our story. Did you think you could relax? That you'd seen everything there was to see? Or have you realized you can't look away and that the game has never been better? That is hockey. Everyone is ready for Monday Night Football because you have to be ready to make a statement. Today we got one monster! Get a win! Chicago is ready to bear down. We're cooking with grease! We're cooking with grease! The Patriots are ready to do their job. We just gotta keep doing that. That's exactly what we wanna do right there. The Chicago Bears square off with Belichick and the Patriots. is USF Pulse Unlimited. Listen in on the free tune-in app for live broadcast. <laughs> Halftime in Boca Raton, the home for USF for one week. Coming up, the top plays of the week in the American. When it comes to doing, getting what you need starts with our app. Need it today? Pick it up curbside. Need it to you? We deliver. Your trunk, our trucks. However you get it, we've got you. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app. Sand. We like sand, don't we? Between the toes and such, and in other places. Expedia tracks the price of your flight and lets you know when it's best to book. So you can go see all the sandiest sand. And never wonder if you booked at the right time. Because you did. The older. The physically challenged. The last to be chosen. Shelter dogs with special needs face a far longer road to adoption. But Subaru knows even the toughest roads can lead to the most amazing places. That's why Subaru and our retailers created National Make-A-Dogs Day to help all underdogs find homes. 
Subaru, more than a car company. You can't haggle the price of your phone bill, but you can on a new RV at General RV during the Bid and Buy sales event. October 19th through the 23rd, the best price can be your price because we're accepting offers on all new RVs. Shop our huge selection of travel trailers, fifth wheels, luxury motorhomes, B-vans, and more. It's never been easier to get a great deal. You bid, you buy, you camp, but only at General RV. Target. You spend the day watching your kids' big game. At least one of you is having fun. Chop house aioli is calling your name. You want crispy onion strings and a brioche bun. Everything's better with melted cheese. Kevin's dad doesn't understand boundaries. The Sonic Chop House cheeseburger. Sonic. Get ready. I need all the heroes I can get. Here we come. The world is watching. Oh. It's really kind of doing it for me. Thousands of games, including the one you want. Let's get that is hockey. Live NHL games from every team. Home and away games. When you're away from home, that is hockey. The moments no one has but us. The plays no one has but us. That is hockey on ESPN+. Plus. USF and ECU at the half. Time for the best of the best in the American. The Uber plays, you could say. Well, who better to guide us than Morgan Uber? Hello and welcome into the American Studios. I'm Morgan Uber. It was the final weekend of major non-conference play here in the American, and with that, three teams that picked up wins also picked up top plays of the week. And we start right there at number five in Orlando with UCF hosting Georgia Tech. Xavier Townsend back to receive the punt. And it's blocked by Quadrant Bullard who scoops up the ball and scores a touchdown for the night. His teammate Jarvis Ware got a piece of it. And then Bullard runs over and picks up the ball. And boy, is he off to the races. UCF ends up finishing on top 27-10. To the pitch we go at number four, Memphis at Cincy. The Tigers with a set piece opportunity and Maya Jones bends this ball over everybody even the bearcats keeper there's absolutely nothing a defender or the goalkeeper could have done about that one and this one ended in a 2-2 draw at number three we stay in cincy but we've got football for you the bearcats hosting indiana ben bryant airs this one out to tyler scott in the end zone touchdown cincinnati it's a perfectly thrown ball. The Bryant Scott connection, their second TD of the day, and since he wins, 45-24. At number two, we head to Philly for UMass at Temple. The Owls up 14-0, and Leighton Jordan snags this one with one hand and takes it 40 yards to the house. And that is a TD for the Owls. Jordan showing off his ups and athleticism right there. And this Owls D goes on to force a shutout for the first time since 2016. Finally, at number one, men's soccer conference play action. FIU at SMU. The Mustangs, J.P. Jordan with a heads-up assist to Jose Ortiz, who takes a spin for a bicycle kick beauty. The Mustangs go on to pick up the conference win, 6-4. If you see a top play happen live, you can let us know on social media using the hashtag American Top Plays and tweet at the American Conference at American underscore com. Keep it locked in right here on ESPN Plus. We'll get you out to your second half action right after this.
When it comes to doing, getting what you need starts with our app. Need it today? Pick it up curbside. Need it to you? We deliver. Your trunk? Our trucks. However you get it, we've got you. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app. You can't haggle the price of your phone bill. But you can on a new RV at General RV during the Bid and Buy sales event. October 19th through the 23rd, the best price can be your price because we're accepting offers on all new RVs. Shop our huge selection of travel trailers, fifth wheels, luxury motorhomes, B-vans, and more. It's never been easier to get a great deal. You bid, you buy, you camp, but only at General RV. You could just blend in. Or you can show up. Tell the world what you're about without ever saying a word. MLS Cup Playoffs. Time to show it to the world. Don't miss the 2022 MLS Cup Playoffs, October 15th through the 30th. I think we've got one hell of a race here in Texas. for a great story. A great story has magic, power, and every once in a while, it has miracles. It needs an opening that sucks you in, and a mind-blowing ending that has you hanging on every snap. That's what makes for a great story. And as luck would have it, that's our story. Thousands of games, including the one you want. That is hockey. Live NHL games from every team. Home and away games when you're away from home. That is hockey. The moments no one has but us. The plays no one has but us. That is hockey on ESPN+. Plus. It's a beautiful time for basketball. A season fresh with hope and stars vying for greatness. NBA Opening Week begins tomorrow and continues Friday on ESPN. in Boca Raton, South Florida, and East Carolina. Coming up, we check out the first half highlights and the start of the second half from FAU. Three means perfection. It's a party, not a crowd. In some places on Earth, it even evokes the divine. Choose between the advanced and dynamic 330i, the adrenaline-inducing M340i, or the electrified 330e. It really is a magic number. The three. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. See your local BMW center today for exceptional lease and finance offers. Riding Hood loved visiting Grandma's house. Unfortunately, others did too. But after saving big with early holiday deals at Amazon, 
she was ready for those uninvited guests. <laughs> Who's a good boy? Apparently the big bad wolf. A corona and palm trees. Huh. A corona and calm seas. And a bomb breeze. And some long knees, strong like a tong squeeze. You'll say, aw, oh, geez, when I make your lawn freeze. Was that good? No. Oh. It was incredible. Oh. Lee bad. Oh. But this, this is good. I shouldn't have wrapped. You can't haggle the price of your phone bill. But you can on a new RV at General RV during the Bid and Buy sales event. October 19th through the 23rd, the best price can be your price because we're accepting offers on all new RVs. Shop our huge selection of travel trailers, fifth wheels, luxury motorhomes, B-vans, and more. It's never been easier to get a great deal. You bid, you buy, you can, but only at General RV. Cajun turkey while you can. The 2022 MLS Cup Playoffs. Time to show it to the world. Don't miss the 2022 MLS Cup Playoffs. October 15th through the 30th. At the half, East Carolina, its first road game of the season, and they lead South Florida 41 to 7 here on ESPN Plus. This game in Boca Raton, not in Tampa, because of Hurricane Ian. We welcome you back along with Taylor McCark, all time winning as quarterback at Rice. I am Ted Emmerich. Uh, this game has a 2020 feel to it. Not many fans in the stands because the game was moved. Both coaches were talking about, hey, we've got to create our own energy. East Carolina has created its own energy and then some. Yeah, East Carolina got the fast start and really never let off the gas. Have gotten just about whatever they wanted on both sides of the ball, but especially on the offensive side. It feels like any time that they have a drive going, South Florida struggling to get them off the field. We've seen some of the explosive plays as well, but Holt Naylor, as we said, he needed a bounce-back performance after the loss against Navy last week. Could not have asked for a better start for that offense for the Pirates. Now, Ehlers has put on a clinic along with C.J. Johnson, teammates in high school and teammates in college and a record-setting half. You notice a trend here for these first-half highlights. It's a lot of explosive plays in the passing game, specifically to C.J. Johnson. Close to 200 yards receiving in that first half alone with the three touchdowns. See the nice hole shot there to Isaiah Winstead. This fumble here I thought was a, a key turning point early in this game. ECU defense able to force the turnover on Gary Bohannon. And then more of the shot plays on the outside. It's a lot of the fades, 2-5, C.J. Johnson. He's had three of those in this game. Another one in the red zone you'll see here in a minute. This play was the lone bright spot for the South Florida offense. Got it to Jimmy Horn on a quick slant. Let him run 91 yards for a touchdown. Gave us a little bit of the Tyree Hill look back at the defender. And then this is another of the quick strike explosive plays over the middle. Got it to the big tight end, Ryan Jones. Even had Rajay Harris, sophomore running back, on in relief for Keaton Mitchell, who's not playing in this game. This is the last one, though, that fade to C.J. Johnson that just continues to win on the outside. 
Can't say enough about the offensive performance for ECU in that first half. USF ball to start the third quarter and a touchback. Bulls will have it at the 25. Yeah, Ehlers in the first half, Taylor, 20 of 26 for 352 yards and five touchdowns. Again, that is one half of work. Meanwhile, for USF, Gary Bohannon, yes, the 91-yard touchdown to Jimmy Horn, but just out of sorts overall. The offense as a whole, and it starts with Gary Bohannon, has had some misfires in this game, but man, people out of place, protection issues up front, the drops, like we mentioned, it's just an offensive unit that has struggled to find any sort of consistency in that first half. Out of an empty set on first down, Bohannon hits Xavier Weaver for a pickup of about four. Again, South Florida without Donovan Jennings, and that'll be the case the rest of the year. Their left tackle broke his leg last week against Louisville, so Demontre Jacobs moves over to take that spot. Lots of injuries at receiver as well, but Weaver and Horn are back this week. Second and six, Brian Batiste swerving for the first down across the 35. Now, USF would love to see more of this from Brian Batiste, who put up 150 yards against Florida two weeks ago. Yeah, good to see the Bulls come out of half. They get straight to tempo and get it to Batiste. Picks up the first down for them. It's an offense that last week when the game got out of hand against Louisville, we saw the backup Catra to sorry, Catravius Marsh at quarterback come in in relief of Gary Bohan, and you wonder if we see Marsh at some point in this second half. First down at the 39. Fake the handoff this time. And Bohannon going deep, and what a catch by Weaver. Full extension for the first down in East Carolina territory. That deep out route that we saw earlier, Gary Bohannon complete to Jimmy Horn. This time to the other side of the field, get it to Xavier Weaver. First three plays of this drive, good momentum coming out of half for South Florida on offense. Coming into the game, Weaver with 20 catches to lead the team. Nobody else had more than six on the year. Toss it. Batty with a lane. Breaks a tackle. And he's inside the 35. You take another look. Just quick toss play out on the edge. Good blocking on the perimeter. For the most part, it looks like Chris Carter, the tight end, did miss his block slightly, but nice job by Brian Batty fighting through that. To say it again, I like the effort and the energy from South Florida coming out for this first possession out of half. Good Swing pass. it, Sean Atkins looking downfield, and Atkins instead will tuck it. And he's upended. You saw the flea flicker, the double pass in the first half that was eventually penalized because of the illegal forward pass. This one doesn't do much either. Yeah, second sort of trickery double pass that we've seen. The earlier got called back because of the illegal, illegal forward pass, like you mentioned. Sean Atkins feels like he does everything for them. He's in the return game for them, clearly can throw the ball as well. Atkins did pick up six on the play. Bohannon fires toward the end zone. Jimmy Horn Jr. elevates for the score. His second touchdown. The nice answer out of half by South Florida. Really no negative plays there. Chipped away down the field and then for Gary Bohannon, put it up high and give Jimmy Horn an opportunity on the outside. It's well protected. Put it up again where only your guy can go up and get it. Jimmy Horn makes a play. Gets South Florida on the board coming out of half. Spencer Schrader for the extra point. So Jimmy Horn Jr. had missed the previous two games with a hamstring injury. He comes back. And he's put up 178 yards and two touchdowns on seven catches. He's a speedster. He also has ups for South Florida. Sand. We like sand, don't we? 
between the toes and such, and in other places. Expedia tracks the price of your flight and lets you know when it's best to book. So you can go see all the sandiest sand. And never wonder if you booked at the right time. Because you did. Labs, where technology and innovation create power beyond belief. Introducing the all-new Ego Power Plus blower, reaching an incredible 765 CFM. It's more powerful than gas, and at speeds of up to 200 miles per hour, it's the industry's most powerful blower. Featuring Ego's patented lithium battery technology, it runs up to 90 minutes on a single charge. That's why Ego is the number one rated brand in cordless outdoor power, exclusively at Lowe's, Ace, and Ego authorized dealers. Don't get me wrong, it's hard work, it's long days, it's all kinds of weather. But when you work under the open sky, you come into contact with something bigger than yourself. It's not a job, it's a life. If it's your life, we back you all the way. Did you know you can save with GoodRx? even if you have insurance? You know, I thought my prescription was covered until it wasn't, but GoodRx helps with that. I work for myself, so I buy my own insurance, and I still check GoodRx. I'm on Medicare. I check GoodRx because it can beat my copay. Who wouldn't like that? Even if you have insurance, GoodRx can help you save. Okay, we'll see you next time. Another good reason to check GoodRx. That is hockey. Who blinks first? Visit the Heismanhouse.com and see if it's you. Jimmy Horn Jr. had just four catches on the year coming into the weekend. Try seven for 178 and two touchdowns. He has been South Florida's offense today in what has been a rough outing to this point against East Carolina. Schrader kicks away for the Bulls, and ECU will have it at the 25. For South Florida, though, if you look, I mean, they're almost to 300 yards of total offense just at the beginning of the third quarter. So on the off offensive side, they've done some nice things. Remember, Gary Bohannon had that fumble in the first half where they were driving. Could have, you know, this would have been a 21-point game. I know that they've given, obviously given up six touchdowns in the first half. You don't really have much of a chance in any game. But on the offensive side, I do think there have been some bright spots. On the defensive side, it's got to figure out a way to get some stops on Holt Naylor's and the CCU offense. Naylor's with five touchdown passes in the first half. On first down, he throws behind Ryan Jones, incomplete. Yeah, and that's probably the frustrating thing, too, for USF fans is there are playmakers on the field. Not last week against Louisville. Horn and many others were out because of injuries. But there's a lot of talent with this group, especially with the transfers they brought in. Well, and it's a defensive unit that played so well against Florida just two weeks ago. It really shut down that Florida rushing attack. Had a couple big interceptions on the outside of Morris Brown. Dwayne Bowles had one as well. And today just have really struggled as a defensive unit. Second and 10. And right into the middle of the line. USF has none of that. Rajay Harris could not get going. D.J. Gordon, the fourth, again at the heart of the play. That was also something Coach Jeff Scott was worried about. He thought you know, when we went to Gainesville, playing in front of 80,000 people, it was easy to have that motivation and the juice behind you to go out and play well. And in the past two weeks, at Louisville, on the road, a lot of people out. It wasn't a huge crowd. And then come back this week, obviously not going to be a crowd, a big crowd with everything that has gone into moving this game. Felt like we've got to figure out a way to find some juice and some motivation internally. Sun peeking through, third and 10. 
ECU is six of nine on third down today. Lobbing it for Jones and not even close. So USF with the touchdown to start the half and now a stop. It's fourth down for the Pirates. A good three and out series for this South Florida defense. They go back to their bread and butter on the defensive side on third and long, man defense, bring some pressure and a good job on the back end in coverage as we see our guy Sean Atkins back there again deep. We saw him a minute ago with the uh, the double pass attempt. They uh, used 38 in a lot of ways. Are, are we adopting him now? He's our guy? He's our guy. I like it. Atkins underneath it at the 35. Stays on his feet. Nice little move, Atkins, to the 45-yard line. See what I mean? All right, he's our guy. <laughs> I'm with you. The sophomore from Vieira, Florida. Gives USF good field position. Well, we know what Hurricane Ian has done to Florida, the Carolinas, the devastation that it leaves behind. You can help. Donate at redcross.org slash ESPN. Help the Red Cross prepare for and respond to and help people recover and rebuild. That's redcross.org slash ESPN. USF moved its operations this week to Fort Lauderdale, just south of Boca Raton. Practiced at Miami's indoor facility on Wednesday. Swing it, Brian Batty, first down to the East Carolina 44-yard line. Love this energy again for South Florida coming out of half. Do we get more tempo for them? It looks like they're getting back on the ball. Looking to go quick. Look, are they going to be able to come back from 41-7 to down? Probably not. Right. But it is an encouraging sign if you're a South Florida fan. There's not any quit in this team right now coming out of half. Now hand it to Batty. Off tackle. And yeah, no, runs into Jawan Powell. Good open field tackler at corner for East Carolina. Pick up of a couple. If, we, if you missed us at the open, it's also one of the things we talked about with all the changes for South Florida this week. One of the big ones, this is a team that practices in the morning, and they needed to use the Miami indoor. They were practicing from 7.30 at night to 9.30 at night, then had to drive an hour to get back to their hotel. These guys were going to sleep at 11.30 midnight during the week this week. Just a lot of things that they've had to fight through just to get on the field today. Second and nine play action for Gary Bohannon. Oh, Bohannon with the pump now lets it go and oh, almost intercepted. Sean Dorso is much closer to it. Xavier Weaver was down there for South Florida. Yeah, they practice at the Miami Indoor Facility Wednesday, and Jeff Scott told us, you know, usually we like to get going with music. The music wasn't working, and yet they still had one of their best practices of the year. Down. Part of the message was, hey, we got to create our own energy in the game. Let's do it tonight without our music. Yes, that fires us up. And they got good work done. The coaches really feel like it was an excellent week of practice, even though it doesn't really show it so far today. Third and nine, Bo Hannon with the first down. Close to the red zone, just shy of the 20. This is what USF's offense can look like. Bo Hannon, the dual threat. Quarterback draw on third and long. And it shouldn't come as a surprise to East Carolina. That's a popular play call if you have a mobile quarterback. As we get more tempo from South Florida. It's Batty on the ground. Steps out of a tackle. And Batty is inside the 10. First and goal for the Bulls. And one of the surprises for me in this game is that we haven't seen more of Gary Bohannon in the run game. As it looks like we've got a defender down. Juan Powell. Yeah, Jawan Powell is down for East Carolina. has been a standout in the secondary this year, moving from safety to corner. Back to the run by Batty. Patient run by Batty. Set up to the left side initially, makes a defender miss, and you said it, Juwan Powell, right at the very beginning. It looks like maybe he's grabbing his shoulder. Hopefully we see him back in the game. Powell, sophomore from Atlanta. And help to his feet. But first and goal for USF. They started the half with the touchdown pass from Bohannon to Jimmy Horn. And they're threatening again. Going back to Gary Bohannon in the run game. 
a big reason why South Florida had a chance to not only you know, compete in that game against Florida, but late in that game, they were winning by a touchdown. It felt like they might go in to the swamp and get out there, uh, get out of there with a win. A big part of that was Gary Bohannon running the ball, had over 100 yards on the ground. First half of this game, we really didn't see a lot of that. There was just a couple of design run plays for him. That quarterback draw on third and long, I like that decision making and the play calling from offensive coordinator Travis Trickett. First and goal from the eight. Bohannon keeps on the option. And Bohannon is cut down near the line of scrimmage. Jairo Wilson sweeping the leg, second and goal. And last week against Louisville, you touched on it earlier, Weaver, Horn, Brown, Ajo, all of these guys out last week. Uh, the game against Louisville felt very similar to how this first half went for South Florida. Slow start, could not get out of the rut that they, and the hole that they dug themselves. But the effort coming out in this second half have been really impressed with. Second and goal from the eight. Bohannon gives it to Michael Dukes, who charges across the five. It'll be third and goal at the four. The Clemson transfer, Michael Dukes, with Jaron Mangum out. Brian Batty, we've seen a lot, a lot of, but Michael Dukes has had an expanded role as well for the South Florida offense. I know this goes without saying, but obviously four down territory here. Just try, you don't have to score on this play necessarily. Continue get yourself forward a little bit, set up even a, a closer fourth and manageable if possible. Yeah, the run is in play here, third and goal from the four. Bohannon eyes the end zone, and it is caught for the touchdown. Sean Atkins, go ahead and dance. USF showing a little something here early in the second half as they cut into the deficit some more. Big 3-8, Sean Atkins. This is just a retrace route to the top of the field. And Gary Bohannon, patient, lets the play develop a little bit, puts an accurate ball on Sean Atkins. A good catch there. Back-to-back -back touchdowns coming out of half. South Florida showing some fight down big in this game. Schrader with the PAT. And from 41 to 7 at the half to down 41 21. Certainly something to build on for South Florida. Midway through the third quarter, the Bulls have life. three means perfection. Choose between the 330i, the M340i, or the Electrify 330e. The three. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Take advantage of exceptional lease and finance offers today. You use a map in your car. Why not use a map with your cart? Store mode in the Home Depot app makes doing easy, showing you where to find what you need. Let's call it turn-by-turn -turn shopping. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app. Ironic. Edelman struggling with reception. Two things I hate dropping. Balls and calls. Well, you need a better network. Time to switch to Verizon, the most reliable 5G network in America. I'm listening. You even get a free 5G phone on them. Sweet. So now, whether you're in the city or on the road. Reception. And getting the network you want and a brand new phone. Touchdown! Oh! Touchdown! Switch now and get the new Google Pixel 7 Pro on us. Only on the network America relies on. Verizon. Dude, this thing is awesome. I know. I bought it using the cash rewards card from Navy Federal Credit Union. I get cash back on every purchase. Honestly, I can't imagine where I'd be without them. One word. Got it. Reeling in fish. No. Eating fish. Fish in the sea? Movie. Now we're up to 1.75% cash back on all purchases. Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. This World Series, sign up for Taco Bell Rewards and get a free Doritos Locos Tacos after the first stolen base. Last year, Ozzy Albee scored America free tacos in seconds. And this year, you can steal your taco faster than ever, only on the app. Hear the music. Oh, 
Touchdown, stop, and touchdown to start the second half for South Florida in Boca Raton at FAU Stadium, their temporary home for the week. Gary Bohannon's third touchdown pass of the game. This one to Sean Atkins. By the way, Atkins, fourth-year sophomore, his first career touchdown catch. And South Florida has come out with a little fight here in the second half. Showing some life in the second half. And I've been on the wrong side of these games before where you can go either way. You can roll your helmet out for the second half and just say, let's get out of here. The game's been moved. We've had a hurricane all week. You've got all the excuses in the world if you're South Florida to just lay down and say, we're done. Let's just get back home. They haven't done that. Credit to South Florida, down 41-7 to at half for showing the energy coming out in the first part of this third quarter. See if they can force another three and out. If they do, there's an opportunity and a window here for them to legitimately climb back in this game. Jeff Scott coming into the season thought that this was by far his best team in his three years in Tampa. Deepest team, all the Power Five transfers. Again, they've seen plenty of them because of injuries over the last few weeks. But now, East Carolina's lead is down to 20. Can USF defense keep this up? Stopping Holton Aylers and company. Jet sweep, Ryan Jones turning the corner and picks up about 11, a first down for the Pirates. That graphic right there with the total yards, I think is so telling that in the first half, South Florida was still moving the ball. It was the turnover early as we see the jet sweep here get on the edge. And a nice job by Ryan Jones. You know you have a good tight end if you're running jet sweep to your tight end. It's like Brock Bowers at Georgia taking jet sweeps for touchdowns 75 yards away. Ehlers misses his target on first down, looking for Jones at midfield. Second time in the second half, Holton Ehlers has tried to find his tight end on the over route. It has been behind him both times. I thought maybe there was a defender that was in the way where Holton Ehlers couldn't put it on the front side of Ryan Jones, but that is the second time they've missed on that route. You see this shorthanded itself. Keaton Mitchell out with a hip injury. Jalen Johnson is not dressed in the second half. He was shaken up early on today. Second and ten. Naylor's throws it short. C.J. Johnson has had a monster game, and he's out close to the 50. Johnson with a career-high three touchdowns. That's his sixth catch, close to 200 yards now. More pressure off the edge. This almost gets batted down, but a nice job by Holt Naylor's. If you're ever in doubt, especially in this game, just figure out where C.J. Johnson is and try and get him the ball. So a new set of downs at the ECU 48. And a flag down just as Ehlers takes the snap. That's on the left guard, Nyshad Strother. We just get the sense, can Jeff Scott and company put something together in the second half just to build on moving forward. Last week was a burn the tape kind of game against Louisville. First half was certainly a burn the tape half here in Boca Raton. First and 15, swing it to Rajay Harris. Blockers in front, lowers the shoulder, and Harris is still going. A first down across the USF 40. It's going to take more than that to bring down Rajay Harris. And it's a great individual effort by Rajay Harris, but the blocking on the perimeter. I want you to watch number four, Ryan Jones and C.J. Johnson. Look right there, both of his guys on the outside blocking downfield. That's the only reason this play has a chance. And then Rajay Harris with the good physical finish at the end. First down from the 38 of South Florida. Dump it. It's Harris in the passing game. And Harris is close to another first down at the 29-yard line. I love seeing big, nice shot Strother. After he had that penalty a second ago, he's getting downfield, getting a second-level block. 
Now Harris has had back-to-back 100-yard -back rushing games against USF the last two years. First one was really his coming out party on his way to becoming the American Co-Rookie of the Year. Second and one. As Harris gets a breather, Marlon Gunn in the game. The true freshman from Baton Rouge is tossed down behind the line of scrimmage. No chance at all. Dwayne Boyles is there for USF, and he remains down for a moment. And Rashad Cheney blew that play up in the interior. Take a look at 90 right there, winning across the face. He beats Isaiah Foote. Hopefully, like you said, hopefully Dwayne Boyles is okay. That's a linebacker room that is banged up. Good to see him jogging off the field. Please reset the power. game clock to four minutes, 50 seconds. Four, five, zero. Greer already out Thank you. for a couple of weeks because of a broken wrist that he suffered last week. And now Boyles has to head out third and five. Taylors might be adjusting the protection. Blitz off the edge from the blind side of Ehlers, and he has to throw it away. D.J. Gordon on the blitz. We said at the top, this linebacker crew, they're the leaders of this defense. Off the right side, you see right there, big number eight, D.J. Gordon, the Minnesota transfer, getting after the quarterback. And a decent job by Holton Naylor just get rid of the ball. They stay on the field for fourth down again. Uh, in no man's land, fourth and five from the 33 of USF. ECU goes with the hard count. They got to look at what USF was about to bring in, in with the pressure. Fourth and five. Ehlers over the middle. It's caught by Winstead. A first down. And still going inside the 10. First and goal for East Carolina. This play is all set up by having a veteran senior quarterback recognizes where the pressure is coming from off the right side, goes to the boundary where it's just man on man, gets the, the quick slant to Isaiah Winstead. It, again, that goes back to your veteran quarterback figuring out what the defense is about to bring. Get yourself in a better play to pick up the first down. Ehlers is over 400 yards passing. First and goal. Ehlers takes a shot. C.J. Johnson again. Did he get a foot down? He did. The connection continues. Ehlers and C.J. Johnson putting on a clinic. The fourth Touchdown of the game for C.J. Johnson and number six for Ehlers. It's just stealing to the outside. It's another fade route. This is simple. Raise up and throw the ball to the corner of the end zone and give C.J. Johnson a chance. It's a well-thrown ball. Don't get me wrong. But right now, C.J. Johnson is just winning on the outside, and it doesn't matter who's oh, covering him for South Florida. C.J. Johnson is winning every time. Four touchdowns in this game. What a performance from C.J. Johnson. We saw C.J. Johnson shaking his left hand on his way to the bench there. Daffer with the extra point, and now the trainer is checking out C.J. Johnson's hand. It has been a hot hand. The left hand of Holton Ehlers to the two hands of C.J. Johnson. Four touchdowns on the day. You use a map in your car. Why not use a map with your cart? Store mode in the Home Depot app makes doing easy, showing you where to find what you need. Let's call it turn-by-turn -turn shopping. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app. Fish and feet? As an Expedia member, you can save up to 30% when you add a hotel to your flight. So you can learn every way to say... Knowing you get a sweet deal. Ironic. 
gentlemen struggling with reception. Time to switch to Verizon, the most reliable 5G network in America. I'm listening. You even get a free 5G phone on them. Touchdown! Switch now and get the new Google Pixel 7 Pro on us, only on Verizon. You can't haggle the price of your phone bill. But you can on a new RV at General RV during the Bid and Buy sales event. October 19th through the 23rd, the best price can be your price because we're accepting offers on all new RVs. Shop our huge selection of travel trailers, fifth wheels, luxury motorhomes, B-vans, and more. It's never been easier to get a great deal. You bid, you buy, you can, but only at General RV. Don't get me wrong. It's hard work. It's long days. It's all kinds of weather. But when you work under the open sky, you come into contact with something bigger than yourself. It's not a job. It's a life. If it's your life, we back you all the way. NBA Open Week begins tomorrow and continues Friday on ESPN. Thousands of games, including the one you want. The moments no one has but us. The plays no one has but us. That is hockey on ESPN+. Plus. General admission tickets at FAU Stadium available this week for 10 bucks. Sit wherever you want. Worth the price of admission today, Holton Ehlers and C.J. Johnson. Ehlers has tied a career high with six touchdown passes, four of them to Johnson. And East Carolina's lead is 48-21 over USF. Daffer boots it away. And will Batsy bring it out? He will. Across the 15. Batsy trying to stay upright. And he's down at the 25-yard line. This connection, Ehlers to C.J. Johnson, it's absurd today. Well, and it hasn't been complicated. I mean, these have been shot plays on the outside where, again, C.J. Johnson is just winning. He's stacking his defender. He's winning over the top. And then Holton Ehlers is putting it in a catchable spot. Some of these have been the long balls where there's the run after catch, but a couple of these have just been Holt Naylor's throwing it to that back corner of the end zone and let C.J. Johnson go get it. This was a 41-7 East Carolina lead at the break. Down in 10. USF, USF with 14 unanswered to start the half before that last Pirate touchdown. Gary Bohannon trying to throw the slant to Jimmy Horn, who's had a big day, and it's incomplete. Good job by Chance Bates dropping back into coverage, getting the throwing lane there to cause the incompletion. Bates came over from Kennesaw State to where his defensive coordinator, Blake Harrell, was for just one season. They had that connection. Transfers over, and he's been a good backup secondary linebacker behind Xavier Smith in the middle. Second and ten. Batsy trying to squeeze through, and he stopped at the line of scrimmage, third and ten, coming up. Yeah, much like with USF and DJ Gordon being that third linebacker who plays a ton, Chance Bates has become that for ECU. No gain in the play. Third down, ten. So third and ten coming up for the Bulls, who are two of seven on third down. East Carolina showing a blitz with Taylor Jackson. Bohannon adjusts. ECU brings the blitz. Bohannon under duress. Bohannon extending the play. Across the 30 and knocked down just short of the sticks. He needed the 35. He doesn't pick up the first down. But got a taste there of what makes Gary Bohannon to a defensive player. so special. 
outruns Chance Bates to the perimeter. As you see big Elijah Morris trying to chase him down. And unfortunately, it looked like some friendly fire there in the middle. Now, Taylor Jackson, the linebacker, who came on the blitz and eventually helped make the tackle, remains down as trainers check him out. Well, American fans, you can check out so much more than just football on ESPN+. Plus. Try 140-plus games of men's and women's soccer. Also, 140-plus volleyball matches. And ESPN+, Plus is the home of American Fall Championships, including cross-country and both men's and women's soccer tournaments. ESPNplus.com slash AAC to sign up. Of course, if you're watching this right now, you're already signed up, but... Just letting you know, there's a lot more to come. <laughs> or you might be using somebody else's password. That's okay. No judgment. No judgment. <laughs> so fourth and two, and USF is going USF. for it from their own 33. Fake the jet sweep. Bo Hannon on the keeper. The first down across the 40-yard line was trying to shake free from Malik Fleming at the end. Bo Hannon moving the sticks. Love the play design. Bring the jet sweep across. Get linebackers flowing in one direction and then just run Gary Bohannon right at you. Pick up the big first down. Still, I know on the defensive side, South Florida is struggling, but this South Florida offense, especially coming out in the second half, playing well. There's no, there's no quit in this unit. At this rate, they're going to be able to take a lot from this second half, no matter the end result. Bohannon in trouble again and off his back foot, trying to let it go. Question here, is he inside the pocket? That ball didn't make it back to the line of scrimmage, and the officials confirm. They're going to say that Jimmy Horn was in the area. And that's who they're pointing at right now, because you're right, Ted, that ball did not get back to the line of scrimmage. We'll see if we can see him on the right side of your replay here. Gary Bohannon gets rid of it out to the right side, and you see five yeah. right there. You see Jimmy Shirley Horn coming into the screen. That's who he's targeting. Gets it close enough that they avoid grounding there. Yeah, no penalty there. Good call. Second and 10. Minute 34 to play in the quarter. And it to Batty with room to run. Brian Batty stumbling across the 45. Boy, Batty is always a threat whenever he touches the ball, whether it's on special teams or certainly at running back. We've seen the big plays from C.J. Johnson, but doesn't it feel like Brian Batty's like one missed tackle away from really busting one? Just simple stretch zone out to the right. They pull the guard and tackle around to get flow going the wrong direction, make it look like you're going to get quarterback run game, and then leak Brian Batty out to the left side. Good play design there. Pickup of 18 yards to the East Carolina 41. Fake the handoff to Batty. And Bohannon heaves it, and it's caught by Weaver. Inside the 20. Another first down for USF, and a flag is down after the play. And May get unnecessary roughness here late. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 32, defense. Passes this to the goal line. First down. Taylor, you nailed it. It's on Julius Wood, the safety. I think Julius Wood just late spinning Xavier Weaver down and then sort of slinging him down once he's out of bounds. Take a look. He's already out. Yeah. Trying to throw the head down into the ground. No need okay. for that. So on first down, first and goal, Batty spinning and reaching for the goal line. He is down inside the one. Got to see a little bit of everything on that run. Got some circle button, a little spin move, dive out, try and extend the ball here. Second and goal from the one. Right back to Batty, and this time the door is shut on what could very well be the final play of the third quarter. Third and goal 
coming up for South Florida, which was down 41 to seven at the break. But some fight here in the third That's from the, the Bulls. In the third quarter. Playing a home game away from home in Boca Raton here on ESPN+. Plus. a map in your car why not use a map with your cart store mode in the home depot app makes doing easy showing you where to find what you need let's call it turn by turn shopping it's made for doing download the home depot app you can't haggle the price of your phone bill but you can on a new rv at general rv during the bid and buy sales event October 19th through the 23rd, the best price can be your price because we're accepting offers on all new RVs. Shop our huge selection of travel trailers, fifth wheels, luxury motorhomes, B-vans, and more. It's never been easier to get a great deal. You bid, you buy, you can, but only at General RV. Custom shirts help people feel like they're part of a team. My name is Timothy Chi, and I'm the CEO of Wedding Mart. We're very proud customers of Custom Inc. We keep coming back to Custom Inc. because of the quality of the product, the customer service, and the ease of use. That moment you walk in the office and people are wearing the same gear, you feel a sense of connectedness and belonging right away. And our shirts from Custom Inc. help bring us together. Custom Inc. has hundreds of products to help you feel connected. Upload your logo or start your design today at custominc.com. Do you want to know what I've been binge watching? Udemy courses. They have thousands of courses that help me advance my career from anywhere, especially with this little one. I need to get in as much learning as I can for both of us. Thousands of games, including the one you want. Let's go! That is hockey. Live NHL games from every team. Home and away games when you're away from home. That is hockey. The moments no one has but us. The plays no one has but us. That is hockey on ESPN+. Plus. Wakanda will fall. They think we're vulnerable. They're welcome to find out. Get tickets now. Home in theaters, November 11th. Everyone is ready for Monday Night Football because you have to be ready to make a statement. Today we got one monster. Get a win. Chicago is ready to bear down. We're cooking with grease. We're cooking with grease. The Patriots are ready to do their job. We just got to keep doing that. That's exactly what we want to do right there. The Chicago Bears square off with Belichick and the Patriots. Good to see the no quarter flag made it from Greenville to Boca Raton as we start the fourth quarter. Of course, big tradition at Daddy Ficklin Stadium. We start the fourth with USF on the doorstep. Ted Emmerich, Taylor McCarg, our entire crew, third and goal at the one for the Bulls. And Gary Bohannon slices in for the touchdown. Bohannon has thrown for three. And now he has one on the ground for USF. Too easy. We saw that earlier on fourth down. Jet motion, fake the toss, pull the guard and tackle around, and it opens wide up for Gary Bohannon. Spencer Schrader on for the extra point attempt. And Schrader's extra point, extra point is good. good. Just seven points in the first half from USF and three touchdowns here in just over a quarter. Gary Bohannon has accounted for all four touchdowns. 
This game was moved from Tampa to Boca Raton on Tuesday as everyone prepared for Hurricane Ian as it was ready to hammer the Florida Gulf Coast. Raymond James Stadium housed police and emergency responders' vehicles. And so the question was asked, well, why couldn't they play this game? still on Saturday. Tampa thankfully was spared for the most part, but it was used as a shelter. It was used as a place to store vehicles, and it would be a problem for USF to play the game Saturday, plus, of course, the Buccaneers playing the Chiefs on Sunday Night Football tomorrow. As a result, USF had to move to Fort Lauderdale for the week, and just up the road from there in Boca Raton. It, it, it's been like a bull trip for them, according to Jeff Scott. They're hoping that this can be a galvanizing moment. Everyone's staying together. They went out to a mall. They went out to a movie together yesterday. As a 90s kid, that sounds like the best afternoon of all time. Don't know how it is in 2022 but they're hoping it's a bonding moment for this team. Well, and especially the first half, if one or two things are, are go different for them with the way they've played in the second half, we would not have the blowout that we went into half with where it was 41-7. to seven. Still a 20-point game, but USF at least showing something here. Ehlers has shown a lot, and this is off the hands of C.J. Johnson, who has shown everything to this point. Ehlers, 436 yards, career-high tying six touchdowns. Johnson, a career-high four touchdown receptions. Got a flag on the play here. Looks like a hold against ECU. Holding, number 73, offense. 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. It's on the left guard, and I shot Strother. Well, here's your opportunity, South Florida. You got them back to first and 20. Try and get off the field. It's still possible. You're down three scores in just the fourth quarter here remaining. But with the level your offense has been scoring specifically in this third quarter, it's not impossible to think they could still come back in this game. Draw play. And Marlon Gunn, the true freshman, out across the 20 with a nice game. Marlon Gunn, Jr., the ball carrier. On seeing more action. No Keaton Mitchell today, second leading rusher in the American because of a hip injury. And ECU also lost receiver Jalen Johnson to an injury in the first half. And for ECU, just the seven points in this second half so far. Expect them to bleed the clock, let the play clock get pretty close to zero before they snap the ball. Second and 11. Taylor's pitches it, and it's caught by Shane Calhoun. First down for East Carolina. And that's just too easy right now. You're, you're letting Shane Calhoun, the big tight end, just find an open spot in zone coverage. That's been an issue in pass coverage all day for South Florida. There's separation regardless of what they're playing, and even if it's end man coverage. You've seen that's where C.J. Johnson's done a lot of his damage. And then in zone coverage there, not enough bodies close to the skill position players for ECU. That's an easy first down. First down at the 36. And Ehlers gives it. It'll be a gain of one for Gunn there. Gunn picked East Carolina over a few Power 5 schools, including Florida State, Purdue, and TCU. We really like what he could become behind Mitchell and Rajay Harris. Second and nine, Ehlers setting up the screen. Ryan Jones, ball is loose. And it's picked up by South Florida. USF has it. Jaden Curry pounces on top of it. This is a great play in the interior. They fake the tunnel screen and slip it back inside to Ryan Jones. And then a great play by Jason Vaughn. Striking down on the ball on Ryan Jones creates the fumble. Watch right there. This is really close whether or not Ryan Jones has possession. I think it, this call likely stands, especially since it was called a fumble on the field. I think he took that step moving forward, made what we call a football play, which I know we all hate that 
terminology. Right. It's, what does it mean? What does that mean? Nobody knows. But I think this call stands. I don't even know if they're going to take a look at it. And they might not. USF is right at the line. Flag is thrown. Call start. Ready, set. Offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Instead, penalty against USF and Chris Carter, the tight end, as they were rushing to the line. Thought that might get reviewed. But USF takes over in East Carolina territory. At the 40-yard line now to the penalty, first and 15. Bohannon the fake, the bootleg being chased. And the pass is dropped. Jimmy Horn Jr. has caught everything today except for that pass. We saw some drops in the first half. This was a nice job by Jimmy Horn working back to the quarterback. It's just a simple bootleg. East Carolina has it well defended initially, and then Gary Bohannon kind of has to go into scramble drill mode. Jimmy Horn working back as an opportunity to get to a, a more second manageable instead of another second long. Horn has had a career day. Seven catches, 178 yards, and two touchdowns. Second and 15, bad T submarine down inside the 35. After a gain of five, third and ten coming up. And obviously four down territory. I think everything is four down territory, yes. clearly. So good second down, simple play call. Get some of this back, get to a third and ten, knowing we still have two downs here. USF trailed 41-7 to seven at the half. Trying to make it a two-score game now and take advantage of the takeaway. Third and ten. Bohannon keeps it. Across the 25, Gary Bohannon with the first down. He has done that a few times here in the second half. You said it, Gary Bohannon's ability to run the football. We've seen more of it in this second half, and we wondered where it was in the first half. This is back to quarterback draw. That's a designed run play there for Gary Bohannon. They picked up a first down in the, earlier in the third quarter on that quarterback draw as well in a long third down. So first down at the ECU, 24. Make it to Batty. Bohan into the sideline. Weaver comes up with it, but out of bounds. Xavier Weaver going up top. Just could not put the foot down. It's thrown to the right spot, just high and away where only your guy can get it. But Xavier Weaver just runs out of room. Can't come down with a foot in bounds. From the 24 yard line. Second and 10, pitch it to Batty. Carter throws a block in front. And Batty is knocked down. Quarterback pitch to number 21. And Brian knocked Batty. back around the original line of scrimmage. He thought he might have stepped out at the 20. Instead, as he tried to keep his balance, got pushed backward. So again, Obviously, four down territory. I like quarterback run game again. That, to me, has been the area. ECU has not had a great answer for Gary Bohannon running, specifically between the tackles. Maybe you see that jet sweep motion again where they fake the toss to Brian Batty or quarterback draw again. They busted ECU twice on that as well. They did give Batty the 19. Third and five for USF. Bohannon hangs in, and the pass is caught at the 15-yard line by the third-string tight end, Chris Motillo. And they're about a half yard short. It's awfully close, but fourth and less than a yard for USF. Ten and a half to go. Bohannon under center. And Bohannon sneaks across for the first down. And around the 13-yard line, the drive continues for the Bulls. And if you're thinking through, is it possible to come back in this game, 
the benefit of this drive is you're giving your defense a breather. I mean, that's a unit that spent a lot of time on the field in the first half. Now you're getting a chance to grind down East Carolina on a long, sustained drive. Obviously have to end this drive in the end zone, but this has been, I'm sure, a welcome breather for the South Florida defense on the other side. First down, 10. Michael Dukes 13. checks in at running back. And whistles blow the play dead. Before the play clock, raise zero. Timeout. South Florida. So a timeout for the half. USF. Media Play timeout. clock running down, and we will step aside as well. South Florida on the comeback trail. Not done yet. When it comes to doing, getting what you need starts with our app. Need it today? Pick it up curbside. Need it to you? We deliver. Your trunk? Our trucks. However you get it, we've got you. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app. Sand. We like sand, don't we? Between the toes and such, and in other places. Expedia tracks the price of your flight and lets you know when it's best to book. So you can go see all the sandiest sand. And never wonder if you booked at the right time. Because you did. Red Riding Hood loved visiting Grandma's house. Unfortunately, others did too. But after saving big with early holiday deals at Amazon, she was ready for those uninvited guests. Who's a good boy? Apparently the big bad wolf. Thanks to Avalara, we can calculate sales stocks on almost anything, anywhere, automatically. Avalara. What if tax rates change? Ah. Filing sales tax returns. Ah. Managing exemption certificates. Ah. Business license guidance. Ah. How does it connect with the county? Ah. Item classification. Ah. Cross-border sales. Ah. What about... Ah. Do you have those budget markups? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Everyone is ready for Monday Night Football because you have to be ready to make a statement. Today we got one monster! Get a win! Chicago is ready to bear down. We're cooking with grease! We're cooking with grease! The Patriots are ready to do their job. We just gotta keep doing that. That's exactly what we wanna do right there. The Chicago Bears swear off with Belichick and the Patriots. The American Conference on ESPN Plus is presented by GEICO. Proud partner of the American. Fourth quarter in Boca Raton, Ted Emmerich, Taylor McCarg, our entire crew first down for South Florida at the 13 of ECU. They were down 41 to 7 at the break and now threatening again. Gary Bohannon on the move. Bohannon taking off and he goes down just across the 10 yard line. Pick up a four. Well, this was smart by Gary Bohan, and they have this set up where it's a shovel pass back inside the tight end, which is not there. And Gary Bohannon originally raises up like he's going to throw this downfield. He's got linemen downfield, so he tucks it and runs and avoids the penalty. Bohannon coming off a game in which he was benched in the second half against Louisville. He turned it over three times. It was a rough first half outside of the 91-yard touchdown to Jimmy Horn, but he has accounted for all four USF touchdowns today. Dukes on second down and down close to the five. Dukes, been impressed with Michael Dukes running between the Temple, tackles. Physical runner, getting hit at the point of attack, still leans forward and gets you those extra two or three Fire yards. Third Dukes two, taking on the five. role of Jaron Mangum, who we have not seen today. Mangum dealing with an ankle injury. Of course, you have Brian Batty leading the way. But he's 165 pounds. You need someone who can work between the tackles, like Dukes. Third and two. 
Fake the jet sweep. It's Dukes again, lowering the shoulder, driving. And he should have the first down. Michael first Duke. and goal for USF. Expect to see some tempo here. Get South Florida back on the ball. Get this play run quickly. Bohannon under center. Pitch it. Dukes toward the pylon. Reaching for it. And he is in for the touchdown. Michael Dukes, the Clemson transfer, brings South Florida even closer. More of that physicality from number two, Michael Dukes on the edge. This is close. I thought there may have been an elbow down just short of the goal line. We'll get a great look at it here. Fights through a tackler there. And I wonder Rolling if that field. elbow's down before well, he's able down. to swing the, the ball around play, into the goal line. It's under further review. We're going to get another look at it. Looks like this crew's going to take another look and review this. Did that knee, did the elbow touch before he was able to extend the ball to the pylon or even break the plane? We'll take a closer look. The officials certainly are. You'll be able to tell where the elbow goes down. We won't get a great look at where the ball is, but that elbow looks down before he has a chance to extend the ball. So knowing that elbow's down, this look, we should be able to tell pretty clearly. That left arm, watch as he goes down. Elbow will go down at about the one, right there. And that ball yeah. is not extended over the goal line. This Correct. will be spotted at about the half yard line. Great pick up there. And that should be overturned. It was called a touchdown on the field. And these are the reviews. Hopefully, they, they're fairly quick. Obvious to look at. Seems like that should be a, a pretty quick one to turn around. I will go back, though. A good job by Michael Dukes, close to the goal line, fighting through a tackler, tries to extend the ball as he gets it down to about the half-yard line. Looks like we're going to get the call here. Edwin Lee is the referee. After further review, the runner was short of the goal line. The ball we placed at the half-yard line, second and goal. Taylor, you should be a replay official. But then I don't get to hang out with you, Ted. <laughs> that would be an upgrade for you. Oh, as long as we can go back and do more Houston games in 105-degree heat. That was last week, Bayou Bucket. This week a little different in many ways. Second, Second and goal now on. from inside the one. And Bo Hannon just trying to power through. Is he down before reaching across? It appears so. Third and goal for South Florida. No gain in the play. So Bo Hannon couldn't sneak goal. it in. The clock keeps rolling at 740. Third goal now. I always wonder with quarterback sneak why more guys don't go over the top with the Drew Brees just stick the ball out. Drew Brees so famous for that. Not a big guy. Now from the shotgun, third and goal. Fake that jet sweep, trying to run option. Bohannon keeps it to the corner, trying to cut it back, and he's going to lose yardage. Knocked down by Malik Fleming back, and like company. And Fourth and goal for USF. Not, not sure if Number there was one, miscommunication in the interior, but I don't like Direction the Malik. idea of getting your guys on the perimeter at the half yard line. Stay between the tackles. You should be able to get a half yard. Two yard long I think he got spooked right there in the middle by Chance Bates. That's who looked like. Number 40 flashed right in Gary Bohannon's face, and I think that blew this whole play up. To me, should have just Line up, run right at ECU. You should be able to pick up a half yard between two downs. Fourth and goal from the three. And a timeout for East Carolina. Timeout. East Carolina. Their first of the half. Media timeout. 6.36 remaining. South Florida trying to punch it in when we return.
What have we here? A cheddar bacon burger? On a pretzel bun? And beer cheese for dipping? The new pretzel bacon beer cheese burger. Here for a good time, not a long time. Red Robin. Yum. Another busy day? Of course it is. You're a CIO in 2022. But you're covered with security that protects your company everywhere. On premise, in the cloud, and right here too. Comcast Business, powering possibilities. got work worries. They're annoying little things that never leave us alone. Even at work. But you can get them under control. Asana makes work easier for your team so you can focus on all the things that matter instead of just worrying about work. Make work work for you with Asana. The game has never been better. That is hockey. After Gary Bohannon lost three yards on third and goal, fourth and goal now for South Florida, 6.36 to play. And East Carolina by 20. Ted Emmerich, Taylor McCarg, our entire crew, is getting moved from Tampa to Boca because of Hurricane Ian. Problem for USF here is after the turnover, this drive has just taken way too long if they were going to mount a realistic comeback. They need three touchdowns in the fourth quarter to come back in this game. And you're exactly right. This drive has just taken too long. 13 plays and five minutes off the clock on fourth and goal. Jet sweep, Jimmy Horn Jr. is denied. Stopped at the one. East Carolina bows its neck. Chad Stevens, the sophomore from Greensboro, there for the Pirates. Really got to go back and question decision making and play calling. Going back to the last two plays, did not like either one of those that takes the, the ball out of the hands of Gary Bohannon between the tackles. It's the fourth goal line stand of the season by East Carolina, and the Pirates take over. Intelligence is the foundation of any good business. But if every good business has it, how do you stand out? Intuition. When enabled by technology, intuition stops feeling like a hunch and starts looking like confidence. The confidence you get when you work with Cognizant, where we engineer every aspect of your business, technology, processes, and experiences to anticipate expectations and act instantly. This is intuition, and we can engineer it. If you want to ace your paper, download Grammarly. Grammarly helps you clean up messy, confusing sentences to get your point across clearly. Whoa, good luck, future me. No problem. Thank you, thank you. What? Grammarly checks against billions of sites and catches any accidental plagiarism. Looks good to me, submit it. By the way, you end up getting an A+. My name is Denise Romero. I'm 36 years old and I'm from Nogales, Arizona. I'm a single mother of three kids. Before I found the National Diabetes Prevention Program, it was just fast food, having no energy. I was just very depressed. So the doctor told me, you're gonna get diabetes. That's when I was recommended for the National Diabetes Prevention Program. And that's where everything changed. When our community hears that the National Diabetes Prevention Program, that it's a CDC approved program, they trust it they respect it, and they're ready to commit to the program. 
it works and it continues to work. We are preventing type 2 diabetes. We're changing our communities. We're changing lives. You can do it. To learn more about CDC's National Diabetes Prevention Program, go to cdc.gov slash diabetes TV. Tradition going. Go with heart. Go with Southwest. That is hockey. They said go for a drive, and these naps have been unbeatable. So we're getting Chevron with Techron for unbeatable mileage. Paying with the Chevron app makes this stop a snap. A very quiet snap. Unbeatable mileage for unbeatable drives. East Carolina's defense left a little something to be desired for most of this second half. But a goal line stand moments ago. And they've got the 20 point lead and the ball back with six and a half to play. Check out the game summary. Close to 500 yards of offense for the Pirates. Ehlers with a flag down, throwing from his own end zone and incomplete. Intended for Isaiah Winstead. Ehlers has thrown for 446 yards. Both sides, number 13, defense, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. The offsides call is against defensive end Tramel Logan of USF. Ehlers with six touchdown passes, tying his career high, and four of them to C.J. Johnson. Yeah, tale of two halves where it was dominated in the first half by ECU, and they converted with points. South Florida has dominated this second half, but they've had some drive stall, specifically the one that we just saw where they got all the way down to the half-yard line and didn't score. First and five after the penalty. And here is Harris busting through first down, close to the 15-yard line. For Coach Mike Houston and defensive coordinator Blake Harrell, they are not going to be happy about this defense's second-half performance specifically. I think there's way too many things that South Florida, to their credit, they've done right. But I thought the effort in the second half from East Carolina has been pretty poor. It felt like maybe they thought they could roll their helmet out and that South Florida was just going to quit. There has not been any quit in South Florida in this second half, which I think they deserve a lot of credit for that. On first down, give it to Harris again with a lane to run through. Another first down to the 30-yard line before Mikhail LaPointe dumps him. And Harris slow to get up. This is a running back room that's already a little bit thin right now. It looked like he got stuck right in the chest by Mikhail Point. Harris was grabbing his right leg for a moment. Yeah, Keaton Mitchell already out with the hip injury. Now Harris receiving medical attention in a game that's in hand with under six minutes to play. We check out the American scoreboard. Last night was a classic. In overtime, Tulane with their third string quarterback, Kai Horton, going on the road and beating Houston 27-24. That was a huge win for Willie Fritz, and especially to bounce back after they lost at home to Southern Miss. Navy, I think, is, is turning their season around. The big win last week against ECU, that's a very good Air Force team. And it's always, anytime you're in one of the games for the Commander-in-Chief's trophy, a lot of emotion there. I think Navy is better than we originally thought they were. Memphis, slow start against Temple. They pull out the win. The last game tonight, Cincinnati and Tulsa. Can Davis Brin go for Tulsa? I, last I saw, I don't think he's playing in that game. If he can't, Cincinnati, they really catch a break there by not having to play Tulsa. And their starting quarterback in, Davis Brin, who's leading the nation in passing. Pete Thamel reported this morning that Davis Brin was a game-time decision with an injury. Uh, of course, uh, next week, Wednesday night in the American. SMU and UCF are supposed to be playing right now. Game moved to Wednesday because of Hurricane Ian. So Mustangs and UCF will go at it on ESPN2 Wednesday night. What else catches your eye? 
I'll be at Cincinnati next week with Cincinnati and South Florida. I'm interested to see, number one, what does Cincinnati look like this week against Tulsa? Then, again, next week, to me, they're starting to turn into the favorite, especially with how Houston now looks. I think Cincinnati is the favorite in this conference. And then also Tulane for East Carolina coming to town. Tulane now 4-1, 1-0 conference. Do they get Michael Pratt back at quarterback? To me, though, this conference is starting to shake out at First Cincinnati down. at the top, Ten. and then there's a group From of three or four teams line. behind them that's sort of the, the contender for second place right now. now. Rajay Harris walking gingerly off the field. And with five and a half to go, East Carolina with the first down at their own 30. Marlon Gunn back to the line of scrimmage. Keith Mitchell is already out. Harris exits now. Jalen Johnson, the receiver, the grad transfer from Georgia, Marlon was hurt in the Jr. first half. Ball we carrier. haven't seen him since. All the talk about South Florida's injuries, and it is warranted <laughs> without four starters on no defense game. today. But East Carolina has a few players dropping as well today. Gunn through the middle with a little room, breaking a tackle. And Gunn still on his feet inside the 40. Marlon Gunn, Jr., the true freshman with a big game. Yeah, the depth of this quarter, of this running back, rather, showing off in this second half. Really well blocked up front. And then the individual effort by Marlon Gunn makes somebody miss at the second level. Hopefully, Rajay Harris is healthy. We'll, we'll see what the diagnosis is for him after this game. And then if you're an ECU fan, obviously you're hoping that Keaton Mitchell is back next week. He did practice some this week. It was going to be a game time decision. So hopefully this was just a one week issue and that he's back next week for the Pirates. First down, 10. Gun with a 34 yard rip there. And as we hit four minutes to go. And this time Gun is taken down in the backfield. Jason Vaughn, the junior defensive end, has flashed a few times today. And I don't know that anybody blocked Jason Vaughn. Watch off the left side here. It almost looked like they had him turn loose, hoping that he'd be influenced by that jet sweep motion. And he was not. Loss of four on the play. East Carolina will head to New Orleans next, next week. They started the season with four straight home games. This is their first road game of the season, and really it's more of a neutral site game in Boca Raton. Ehlers flips it. Shane Calhoun with the catch. And out of bounds at the 32-yard line. And those road games are coming for East Carolina. Back to back here, South Florida and Tulane. Then a couple of home games, Memphis and UCF. But a road trip to BYU later this month. And they close with at Cincinnati, home against Houston, and at Temple. And ECU picked to finish sixth in the America. But gunning not just for a bowl berth again this season, but for a spot near the top of the standings. Third and six, the draw to gun. And gun is tugged down from behind. Nice play made by USF and Dwayne Boyles. South Florida. The timeout for the Bulls. Media timeout. So a timeout with 2.35 remaining. Fourth down coming up for East Carolina. Up by 20 over South Florida. Thank you. We decided it's time to put a different kind of power tool in your hands. Store Mode in the Home Depot app gives you in-store tools made to help you get more done. To guide you every step of the way and explore products quickly with the scan. That way you get the top brands at the best prices without missing a beat. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app and see how doers get more done. Intelligence is the foundation of any good business. But if every good business has it, how do you stand out? Intuition. 
When enabled by technology, intuition stops feeling like a hunch and starts looking like confidence. The confidence you get when you work with Cognizant, where we engineer every aspect of your business, technology, processes, and experiences to anticipate expectations and act instantly. This is intuition, and we can engineer it. I'll remember that chapter of my life forever. We laughed. We cried. We protected that progressive home and auto bundle day and night. We were all of us dazzling. Like knights sworn to protect our kingdom. We knew it wouldn't last forever, but that's what made it special. You know we'll be back tomorrow, right? Yeah, but it'll never be today again. Just get on the ball. Not the end portal. I'm getting some carrots. Serious? Here's the dragon. You gotta take out the top. Who got him? Yes! Couldn't sleep. Hey, sweet sis. <laughs> Nerding out online. That's our way to play. Nintendo Switch. Asking what will Pop-Tarts do is how you get from toast and jam to that's my jam. From Sunday to Sunye. So, like, what will Pop-Tarts do here? Yeah, that feels right. Crazy good. Six for East Carolina at the USF 32. 237 remaining. And the Pirates up by 20. Holton Aylers has thrown for more than 450 yards today and six touchdowns. Five year starter. Hits Isaiah Winstead. What a grab by the grad transfer. And Winstead with the catch near the sticks. It's a first down. A really nice job by Holton Aylers recognizing coverage again. South Florida is rolling to single high. They're blitzing from the field. And he realizes Isaiah Winstead on the backside is just one-on-one. -on -one, and he's won that matchup all game. He's got Christian Williams covering him who's got the broken hand one of the guys we've talked about with the cast Isaiah Winstead wins picks up the first down under two minutes to go now Winstead with six grabs for 73 yards and a score gun through the middle and inside the 20 yard line now you wondered how would East Carolina respond after another heartbreaking loss this one to Navy last week in overtime. Of course, the missed field goal by Owen Daffer at the end, but also the interception by Ehlers. Uh, they were up 41-7 to at halftime of this game. They responded just fine. They absolutely did, and the, the third quarter specifically, I thought, is where ECU let down quite a bit, let South Florida climb back in this game, but they closed it out nicely. The, the fourth down stop backed up in their own end on defense was nice earlier in the fourth quarter, but you talked about that first half. Just about everything went right for ECU to open the game. Gone again, and he's twisted down near the line of scrimmage. DJ Gordon has had a really nice game for USF. And for South Florida, Florida again, credit to them for responding in the second half. They had basically everything going against them this week, from injuries to relocating during the hurricane. This was a, a difficult game for them to even get on the field and get off. Credit to them. Down 41-7, to seven, you could have very easily just folded it in and said, we'll see you guys next week. But they come back out, try and make Third a game of it. From the 19. Third and five, 30 seconds to go. And Ehlers flicks it to Calhoun. Tackled close to the 15. Fourth down coming up, but that really should be it. The game was moved from Tampa to Boca Raton. South Florida set up in Fort Lauderdale all week. Mike Houston's team put the pedal to the floor early. Took a 41-7 lead at the break. 
And the Pirates have their first conference win of the season. 48-28 over South Florida. Well, Holton Aylers had a massive day. Check out our B1 performance patch player of the game. It's actually receiver C.J. Johnson who exploded today in Boca Raton. Well, Holt Naylor's had a big game, but a lot of that was because of C.J. Johnson and his ability to win on the outside. We've shown you these highlights several times, and if you haven't seen them yet, you'll notice five C.J. Johnson winning on the outside, stacking his defender, getting in a good position, and a lot of Holt Naylor's deep balls here that are thrown in the right spot, specifically here in the red zone, just throwing it to the corner, letting C.J. Johnson go get the ball, and a career day for C.J. Johnson in a game where it really feels like he didn't do anything wrong. C.J. Johnson, seven catches, 197 yards, four touchdowns, tying the school record with those four touchdown receptions, also tying the American Conference single-game record with four touchdowns. So ECU now above 500, three and two, and one and one in conference play. That was the bounce back they needed from a, a game in conference they lost against Navy. They felt like they should have won Felt like they should have won the opener against NC State, but talked all week. Coach Mike Houston said, we've just got to get back on the right side of momentum, get back to 1-0 in conference, and move on to next week, take it a week at a time. And I still think this is a team that has an outside shot at competing for the conference championship in the American. We'll find out next week against Tulane, which is off to a great start under Willie Fritz. 48-28, East Carolina, the victory. Ayler, six touchdown passes. Johnson, four touchdown catches. So that will do it from Boca Raton for Taylor McCarg and our entire hard-working crew. They did so much to put this thing together this week. This is Ted Emmerich saying so long. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.